What's happened, Lee Syatt? You Every bad night motherfucker. Was Devil's Night for you too. No, no, no. It's all we. That's a, You ever see the movie The Crow? Uh, no. The, I don't like scary was, movies. It was the night before. It, it, oh, I've for heard years of it. Yeah. Growing up, it was the night before Halloween. Devil's Night. That's when you packed the socks and you threw eggs at the house and you toilet paper the oh, wall. Yeah. We call it Mischief Night. Mischief yeah, Night. Same yeah, fucking yeah. difference, but <laughs> yeah, Devil's Night. It's the devil. El Diablo. <laughs> What's up, cocksucker? Thursday. I haven't seen you all week. You've been I know. hiding out. Been hiding out, getting beat up. You went to jujitsu today. You it's fucked been my fun, world yeah. up. I told you it's a lot of fun. <laughs> just, well, uh, I've actually just been kind of crazy. Like you told me when, when I first started jujitsu, it's good to get people from outside of your realm but then the past a like, couple weeks i've kind of been like not depressed but upset because i realized i don't really have kind of basically essentially what you have like with friends like i don't i have you and i have paul and i have family and stuff but ever since i moved out here i was working so much john our guest and you will understand it when you're working so much you don't really focus on friend and I, like all, all any friend i had was from work so ever since I stopped working, I don't really have, like, I, I can tell you anything, but it's also like, it's, you're my boss, so I don't. I'm not your boss. We well, do this together. I'm not your well, fucking boss. Yeah, but in a way, but it's also just like, I, I was thinking about it the other day driving. I was like, I don't really have anyone out here who I can, like, just, like, just their friend stuff. Just to tell them. to. Yeah, it's, Steve it's weird. Simone. You got the Agostino. You got John Budd. Oh, you know, yeah. You just, uh, we forget. And we, we get in ourselves sometimes. Because I do the same thing. I sit there some nights like I'm bored to pieces. Yeah. I got to get new friends. We got a ton of friends. <laughs> we just have no friends that are crazy anymore. No they like go out at 1130 and go to Yum Yum Donuts and smoke pot. <laughs> you know, it just. Uh, but there's we, a difference between friend and, like. Acquaintances. No, not even just acquaintances. It's like, yeah, Steve's my friend. Dave Agostino's my friend. But it's just like. Where you can call them and be like, Do "Hey, this is this is what I'm doing. This is what's going on in my life, and I don't know which way to go." Heart to heart, right? Like I don't have, because with my parents, they want me to be successful and they want me, to, so they'll they'll they're that way. Paula is thinking about her future, and and she she also just has no basis in this, so she's thinking about it. So it's kind of weird. Like I'm at a weird point in my life, and I feel I just. I don't know where to go, and it's also, it's like, I, just, I feel I, I need somebody to bounce stuff off of sometimes. The weird point in your life is all in your fucking head. You got no weird point in your life. It's called life. It's all weird, yeah. And you look at it, you <laughs> suck it in, you observe it, and you fucking move on. We went to a meeting yesterday that opened up my eyes about a lot of shit, but made me sad about it. I was really upset last night. Really? I was upset for a few hours after that meeting yesterday, but I'll tell you what. I thought about it after my wife went to bed. I made some notes. How can you make this better? You learn from it. And this yeah. is how you make things better. You know, you have no sticking point. You're a 27-year-old young man that has the world by the balls. You can do whatever you want. You know, you, you should not have a ceiling on your income. You should not have a ceiling on your career. I never understood that. I never understood how you go to college, you come out, you're 25, and you sign your life away. And one day you're 65 and you get a gold watch. And then you go to me. How come you have stories like that, Joey Diaz? I, I didn't live a life like that because I was a bum for a while. Because sometimes I took chances and I lost. And that's the repercussions of losing. Some, I know what it is to have 60 bucks on a Wednesday and go, this has to last me till Friday. But you know what? I'm going to snort that grand blow and fuck eating tomorrow. And next thing you know, you got to rob a purse at the fucking daycare when you drop your kid off. You know, that's life. That's life. It's... Uh, and you're not at a tough spot. You're at a spot that you're questioning your future. Right. Which, if you don't question your future, you got to be fucking a dummy. If you don't yeah. think, to, I'm eating peanut butter today, when am I going to eat lobster tails every day and get my dick sucked? you got to question your future. And it's weird. For, I was I was realized this yesterday. I was at John's, and I saw, like, a 16-year-old kid getting orders from a manager, like an old um, um, an adult. And I thought about it. I grew up, I went to school, went to college, and I had regular jobs. So I've always had someone to tell me what to do. Like, the past few weeks, I've almost, like, I wish almost that someone could just tell me what to do a little bit. No, you don't. Like, just, not even. <laughs> no, not, you fucking don't. Not even just an order, but just, like, which way to go. But then no, I'm like, you yeah, don't. I don't want that, this but it's hard. This is your life. It's, but it's been 25 years you're, of being told what to do. You know, it's hard. It's like, fuck that. It's weird. It's to what like, you're used to. Yeah. It's what you're used yeah. to. You yeah. know, your mom. Wants you to be successful, but she also wants you to be, the key word is what every woman wants in a relationship, 
security. Mm-hmm. Right. Women's yep. whole thing inside deep is security. They yeah. want to know that they're going to be taken care of. They're going to eat um, until one day a woman says, fuck you, motherfucker. And she gets pissed and she goes out on her own and makes her own stake in this fucking world. Right. And she doesn't listen to feminists or get a tattoo or say I'm creative. <laughs> she just fucking goes for it, okay? Yeah. And, and your friends want sometimes in a way what's convenient for them. You know, hey, do whatever you want to do. Let me tell you about what's going on in my life with sure, my girlfriend. Sure, sure. They'll just pass over your story. Right. The great thing about me, man, is I'm an old man and I've been an old man since I was your age. I was always an old man since I was your age. So a lot of people come to me and ask me what, and how can I tell somebody not to pursue their dream? I had the world by the balls, John Bud. I got up in the morning. I got a truck that was leased for me. They released a cell phone for me. And I'd go to people's houses or people's buildings and I'd measure a roof and then go back and type it in and check with <laughs> Firestone and they'd give me 800 a week and then I did some scams on my own to make some money. I had the world by the balls, but not really. I was working for somebody. Mm. Yeah. I was making right. them money. They weren't splitting right. nothing with me. They weren't giving me a percentage of their profits. They were just paying me fucking uh, salary. But not even working for somebody so much. It's just like... Telling you what your next step is. Yeah. That's, I'm, I'm, that's There's no next step. Life will tell you what the next step is. Right. And you have a split fucking decision to make a decision. <sighs> you have a split decision it's, to it, make a fucking decision. It's frustrating. It's fr- like, it, 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 like, John, you, you left editing. It, it's frustrating. John's had 10 yeah. careers since he, What did you yeah. major in? First of all, John Bud's here. One of the uh, brown belts at VMAC, one of the owners of VMAC, and... The topic today is martial arts. We yeah. wanted to talk about martial arts and how it affects your life. And how I've heard statements over the year that this doesn't work or this doesn't help you. Or Wing Chun is ineffective again. And karate is ineffective. And jujitsu is ineffective if the guy has a stick. Well, guess what? Everybody's <laughs> going to have fucking something. But it's better. The other day you said something. You taught us legs. And you go, listen, this has nothing to do with you motherfuckers. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm wasting air here teaching you a leg lock because you're a white belt. But. I'm going to teach you just in case you're on the street yeah. and somebody yeah. holds you and you're out there scratching yeah. your fucking head. <laughs> right. You know, it's like today we're talking about spider guard. When people get you in a spider guard and there you are like a scarecrow <laughs> breathing and you're like, what's my next move? I got none. I got to run like a motherfucker and break this bond. That's the only fucking, he's got arms, he's got feet in both armpits and he's right. picking me up and I got the smell of foot and armpit traveling to my fucking nose by the minute. So Even though it's your armpit? It's, it's your armpit. Sad. Who gives a fuck? <laughs> You know, and this is where martial arts teaches you a lot. The reason why I had John Bud here today is because I was thinking about this a lot, how everything, every time I've had a good patch of luck in my life. And what's luck? Opportunity mm-hmm. meets, what is it? Hard work, hard I Hard work. Yeah, yeah. What's luck? Part of the catalyst to that luck. Is the hard work. Is the martial arts experience. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. My training with martial arts. You said it keeps calling you back. Right? It always yeah. has called me back yeah. because I always knew that the day I left martial arts was the day my life went into fucking pisser. Hmm. The day I left martial arts, February 19, 1979, <laughs> was the day I left martial arts. My big plan was to win a tournament, to win the, the sparring and the right. form okay. and quit on top. Okay. Listen, okay. man, I'm 15. I'm right. starting to finger people, <laughs> right? Yeah. I'm smoking a little bit of pot. But these fucking geeks at karate, they don't smoke pot. All they want right, to do every right. week is go to tournaments yeah. or go to Honda and buy supplies. Right. I'd sit there with eight fucking geeks and go to, ooh, look at those stars. Ooh, <laughs> look at that gi. Ooh, that's what we do on Saturdays. Eight jerk-offs. <laughs> Going to New York. Meanwhile, somebody's getting their dick sucked two blocks away. And when there's eight 13-year-olds at Honda Clothing Supply, you know, martial <laughs> arts supply, masturbating over right. a gi and the fucking headgear. And, and, and stars. You stars. Buy stars. We were, you know, yeah, going yeah, to yeah. Chinatown and, and <laughs> taking a Chinese guy in the back and asking him about the Chinese. We want the, 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 the recipe to the, yeah. to the iron palm technique. And he would suck, <laughs> and he would suck us in and come in the yeah, back. Yeah, yeah. Who's with you? Right. And he would say to us, this is, and it's called like chin woo juice. They sell that everywhere. He'd take us in the back and what, what, what most kids would pay a dollar for, yeah. here we are paying $50. Yeah. You rub this on your hands and you hit this magic bag. That's right. being a fucking geek. Yep. And eventually your hands will get tough and they'll get red like this shirt when you get into a fight and people will run away. That shit never happens. 
punching yeah, you're stones punching and you're punching stones sand and, and the, yeah, yeah. And <laughs> one day I go, I'm not doing this no more. My friends are fingering people. They're sucking tit behind the grammar school. They're smoking pot. They're listening to music. I hang out with these morons every week. Right. So then I made a 50-50 from like October to February. I would go to martial arts two times a week, okay. and I would only hang with them one Saturday a month or two except, okay. a, instead of four. Right. You know, I was going to martial arts five nights a week. When you're a kid, you go four nights a week. Yeah. You go to the kid class, and then once you become a green belt, they let you stay for the adult yeah. class. And yeah. that's what I did. I went from six to fucking nine. And then you <laughs> sweep the gym. You're the lower belt. Right. You that's sweep right. the gym. That's called respect. It's not something that you, uh, let me, let's do a 21. No, because you're, the guy knew whoever went for that broom, that guy's building character. Mm-hmm. It's not about, well, I'm going to rush to see my girlfriend. It's the guy, it's like Zach would always mop on mm-hmm. Monday nights, right, right. and I would jump in there and mop. That teaches you how to be a man. Yeah. That's, I mean, anybody could kick. It's humbling. And, anybody you know, could punch yeah. you. Yeah. You know, anybody could fucking be in a movie and, ooh, it's, let me see you mop a fucking floor at night. Mm-hmm. That's the martial arts side of it. It's not kicking. It's not the punching. And I think that the country right now with all the UFC and MMA, We've lost what the martial arts is really about. Right, we've right. mixed them together and we've evolved karate with this. And, oh, yeah. But what, like I've always told you since like a month after I met you, and I never told Marcelo this, I never told John Evan this, mm-hmm. there's just certain people, you're a true martial artist. I, I, I try, I try, you know, I mean, <laughs> it's weird, for, weird to hear that, you know. I see a lot of guys and they're good, you know, a lot of guys are good. Um, when you say a true martial artist, what do you mean? Like, what do you mean when you say that to me? A true martial artist is not somebody who walks with a leather jacket down the street and bitch slaps people. Right. A true martial artist sees the other side of it. He sees, uh, you said today that you love in your gym when a purple belt stops. I could take Lee and kick him and yeah. not do anything. But I get off of Lee and I go, Lee, put your arm. Let's right, start from right, scratch. Get right. your remote. Right. That's a martial artist. Yeah. yeah. You rather... You know, you don't have much to prove. You don't don't have much to prove. Yeah, that martial look. I could sit here and go, "Fuck!" You know, uh, Bill Burr did this big thing uh, about uh, alternative comedy. Okay, it's it's, it's hitting right now, and I'm very happy he said it because I too am a true comedian. Yeah, yeah. You know, and and I respect, and I don't like, I don't like, and it's true. Those show, those fucking shows started it all. It weakened our comedy sense, and these people are not into. You know, there's two types of comedy in this town. There's comedy that you belly laugh, yeah. and there's the comedy that's intelligent and witty, and right, everybody right. goes to for a scene. You know sure, what I'm saying? Sure, sure, sure. Bill Burr really broke it down in this uh, in this speech. He really, and, and I wanted to always say what he said. I just ne- didn't know how to get into it. Yeah. We've never touched on it. You know, I don't even know how I got into this with martial arts. <laughs> but a martial artist is somebody, it carries over into my comedy. I've never yeah, yeah. been competitive because of that. Listen, right. uh, Zach Galifianakis is a millionaire, and he's going to do what he's going to do, and Rogan's going to do what he's going to do, and Triple going to do what he's going to do. Yeah. Joey has to do what he does. If you sit there as a yellow belt and you look at that purple belt and you throw hate at him because he's the best, that's not a martial artist. So a martial right. artist is the guy that looks at that purple belt and says, you I know be, what, I wanna, I wanna I'm going to learn like from this yeah. motherfucker. Yeah. Yeah. This guy's doing something right. Yeah. That's a martial artist, somebody oh, yeah. who always wants knowledge. When you go see John Jocko, he's got a black belt with eight or a red belt with eighteen stripes on it, yeah, coral yeah, belt, yeah. whatever that is. Yeah. This guy's put the time in. You always yeah, you God. always when you refer to John Jock, you refer to him as a master. Mm-hmm. When I was selling coke, carrying guns, I would have looked at you and said, Get your life together. And when I walked <laughs> away from your master, what the <laughs> fuck is this? But that's what a true martial artist yeah, is. Yeah. You know why he's a master? Not because he could beat up Chuck Liddell. Not because he could submit John Jones. Because a master means he's put the time in. Oh, yeah. He deserves respect because he's been doing it for 35 years. Absolutely. Half of America can't do anything for 35 minutes. Right. 35 minutes. Yeah. It's, when I first started editing, there's two different programs you can use. Usually it's Final Cut or Avid. And I asked a bunch of the editors when I was first starting, which one do you like better? Right. And every answer I got was this from good editors was, it doesn't matter. It's, it's the tool that I use. So... For what Bill Burr said, I'm sure you could go into any room, do comedy, and make most of the people laugh. You, if someone said John, if John was like, oh, I do Kimura's this way, right. you wouldn't say no. You would just, oh, maybe I can learn something. Absolutely. So it's, yeah. it's 
and when I heard that, and I was that was like one of the first days of my life out here in LA. Is it doesn't matter what program, so it doesn't matter what room you're in. It doesn't matter yeah. what style yeah. of jujitsu. Look, I'm an editor too. Editing has nothing to do with the program. Right. Yeah. It has nothing to do with the program. Yeah. You know? And and jujitsu is the same way. And John Jock, he said, he was just a white belt who's never quit. That's it. You know, I'll paraphrase what he said. I don't know exactly the way he said it. But it was something along those lines. All I am is a white belt who's never quit. You know? And this is a guy who, I mean, talk about a martial artist. You know, the difference between him and his black belts are, you know, they say the 1%. Yeah, he's up there. You know? You ask anybody that's rolled with him or trained with him or learned from him, they'll all tell you the same thing. You know? And uh, like you said, it was dedication. I think he said his black belts, and they're great. His black belts are, are awesome. Uh, they train four times a week. He trained four times a day. I think he said something along those lines where that's that's the that's why there's a difference, you know. That's, well, we, that's we dedication. had Hegan on, and Hegan was talking about they lived on the mat, and they yeah, just yeah. in the morning they their just brother, get up. Their brothers and uh, yeah, John Jack said they used to move all the furniture around in the house, and you know, bang, they would go, you know. So but that's nice. You have five brothers. You can you can do all that, you know, and they were all into it and. Yeah. Now you grew up in Connecticut. Yeah. Born in Connecticut. Born in Portchester, New York. Okay. You know where you know where play uh, Playland is? Yeah. In yeah. Rye. Yeah. Right, yeah, right yeah, there. Yeah. Right there. Fucking Rye, yeah, New yeah, York. Yeah. There so, was something else in Rye, New York. Not uh when I was a kid, I used to go to Rye for something else. Oh Jesus, what the fuck was it? But Playland was and the big a, thing. And there was a pool up there, like yeah. a big pool. The I dragon, fainted. The dragon roller coaster was the yeah, big one. Yeah, I fainted yeah. once at the pool. That's how I knew I had the lung infection. And <laughs> oh Jesus! I was waiting for a hamburger online. The sun was hitting me. <laughs> I went down like a fucking. Uh, what possessed you to walk into a? Was it karate the first day? No, my I uh, was in college. I was in Ithaca, in upstate New York, and uh, I I needed an activity. That's really what it was. So I, I started Blue Wave Taekwondo. That's what it was. And uh, I did that the whole four years of my, my college. And, you know, Lee, like you were saying, um, you're having trouble finding friends and stuff and someone to confide in and, and share and bounce ideas off. I think you find that in the martial arts. I think you find people in you – know, you already have something in common. Right. You're, already, you're already there. You're already trying to learn an art together. You know, look for a friend in there. You know, I've always been very jealous of people like Joey who can walk into a room and are immediately, at least outwardly, it seems like are best friends with everybody. Can 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 laugh and get loud. I'm a yeah. very introverted person. This podcast has helped a lot. Yeah, yeah. But it it takes me. But you you get a in few there. You, weeks. You talk to people a little and, bit. I, I've gotten better. Yeah, but yeah. like when I was when I was working like at a job. It would take me a week or two at a place before I would talk to anybody. Tell him the truth. <laughs> why I sent you to VMAC. Tell him the truth. So I would have, yeah. So I would go out and get a beer. I go. With, I go yeah. You hang out with a fat fifty-year-old fat fucking ex-felon. That's your <laughs> life. You talk to an ex-felon who gives you edibles all fucking day and tries to corrupt your little fucking nice Jew mind. Okay. Why don't you go hang out with some twenty-seven-year-olds, Octavio? Yeah. Zach, yeah. Yeah. Those kids that. Once a month, you know, fuck Paula, fuck Joey, and fuck Steve Simone in comedy. I'm going to go be a 27-year-old and giggle. Sure, You sure. know, Octavio's a geek, too. He takes pictures. Yeah. and Hell yeah. That's why I said to you, go over that. I didn't say nothing about getting in shape. Nothing about jujitsu. <laughs> There's camaraderie. Said, it's yeah, somewhere yeah. where you're going to go that, yeah. you know what, man? These people become your friends. They yeah. become your family. You know, they become your dentist. They become your eye doctor. They, You know, it, it's, a, it's a community. It really is. Some people, you know, then there's the one that's a douchebag that you don't want to hang out with. That's okay. And they go away but, on their know, own. They go away they, on their own. This morning yeah, class, which is good. when I did that to your leg, yeah. I, I, I was pushing you away. But there was, when I was like sixth week at VMAC, this kid came in. And what did he do? He'd give you like the, no, the he can opener in, on you? No, he came fucking scumbag kid. In fact, he didn't last at VMAC. Right. I saw him a couple times after that. He was a blue belt who wore blue gi, and he was kind of Hawaiian looking. Hmm. And he came into John Evans' day class one day. And he did the, not the Baron Bolo sweep, but the oh, other one. Okay. Where you All put right. your leg behind you and you push the guy over. Yeah. He didn't do it gently. He oh. fucking threw me with John Evans stopped right. and goes, guy, yeah. come on. I didn't get mad. No. But I knew what this guy, and then he started talking about, I've been here, here, here. After the third yeah. gym, 
I see it now. Then oh, I saw yeah. him a different day, and somebody yeah. stopped him. Right. He was squeezing, what? and then he came in. And he was throwing. He used to throw kicks and punches on Sundays. Yeah. And then, and then one day he never came back. Right. People that are douchebags like that, they just keep going. They go to gyms to, well, let me try this Kamara. I'll squeeze it once hard yeah. or something yeah. like that. They go away on their own they because do. then a guy like uh, Marcelo yeah. will oh. spot that guy and go, "You oh, want to yeah. hurt people?" Yeah. It's like what you said. You want to yeah. hurt people? Yeah. I'll show you how to fucking hurt people. I'm a black belt. I'll hurt you. Yeah. Quickly. I mean, we never want to do that. <laughs> and you never you want know? to do no, that to nobody. No, no. That's not martial arts. And this is what, uh, you know, when I go, man, again, when I'm home, what do I talk to my wife about? The podcast, how many T-shirts did we sell today? The cats, the baby. Last night I was trying to write a joke at about 930. And, you know, she came in the room and said to me, the baby just found the chocolate syrup. What's that got to fucking do with me, okay? <laughs> now, if I wasn't in jujitsu or doing kettlebells, I would have launched her out the fucking window <laughs> because it's 930. What's the baby finding fudge got to do with me? It's hidden in the fucking refrigerator. So when I go to jujitsu, there's nobody there talking to me about comedy. Right, what time right. my spot is at. Right. Have you heard from this booker? That no. motherfucker, I didn't get this role. That's the last thing. It's a peace of mind for me. I go it over is. there to fucking sweat, yeah. to scare myself, yeah. and to not talk. It's one hour. I don't even like bringing my phone with me to look at the time. I don't no, give a no, fuck. No, no, no. It's in the back because the baby's somewhere. In case when I leave, I got to pick her up. But listen, right. no, I don't, nothing. That's my hour. That's my fucking hour of thinking about arm bars, smelling feet, it's getting like choked one, out. one pointed concentration. That's what it is. You th you're there to think about one thing, talk about one thing, learn about one thing, you know, and you can leave all your troubles somewhere else. That's know? why if I have an audition at one, I'll call John and go, John, I'm not taking class for it because I won't be focusing on my jujitsu. Right, right. And the more serious the audition, <sighs> I can't get that fucking arm bar. Yeah. <laughs> this is what's bothering me. But you know what? Because your head is somewhere else. That's the mental toughness. Yeah. Oh, yeah. To what? To life. Yeah. You just learned about life. You just learned about how to be patient and be in the moment. Everybody wants to be in the moment. Sometimes you walk down the street and you fall. You know why you fall? Because you're thinking of eating your girl's asshole later on. And meanwhile, somebody <laughs> ran off the sidewalk and hit your cat with a car because you're, ha, 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 ha. That's what it teaches you. You know, right now you said you have a problem with uh, life's asking you the next question. Today, we drilled something. That's the same thing in life. Oh, yeah. I threw you around, and then you're supposed to land and get the other hook and throw me off. You know what? You don't wait for him to get on top of you before. Yeah. Now I got to get my arm. No. It's too late. As he's yeah. maneuvering, boom, yeah. that knee and that leg go up. That's it. That's how quick your decisions have to be in life. Yeah. That's martial yeah. arts. Martial, every time you leave VMAC, Higgins, 10th Planet, on the way home, you should be going to yourself, wow. That fucking move. Wow. So I loop I over. I work that again. I'm going to yeah. take him down. Every day when I get home, before I piss, wash my hands, eat something, make a protein shake, I go to jujitsu.com, the thing I told you. Do it you, again and, and again. And I write and that again, I went to class again. and then I write to move out. That's I good. Call that sleeve, I call That's that nice. a sleeve sweep. Today. That's good. I don't know what the name is. You write the move <laughs> out. You oh. write the move yeah. out. It BJJ says Journal notes. Or something? BJJjournal.com. It has notes and it has techniques. Oh, yeah. And it has side guard, so anything you learn from the side control. That he learned, he taught me the three arm prong. Go for the neck, no neck, elbow, hand, choke. You, you know, from the top. Then it has bottom. Then it has Wait. spider guard. That BJJ.com is amazing. That's nice. Because just going home. So before I do anything, anything, shower, call the girlfriend, nothing. I come in, drop my bag, and you write it out. And I sit down oh, the computer, cool. and as I'm as BJJ.com is coming up, is buffering. I'm checking Hotmail. I go back, I log in, boom. It says monthlies. You clock uh, mat time, boom. Now you can look at your mat time. Shit, I only went seven times this month. Last time I went ten. I got to get on top of my fucking game. Then you switch the techniques. You write the technique out, then it says notes. Today I had a great time. Fucking Lee stuck a knee in my throat. But now I know how I to wish. defend against it. You know what I'm saying? No, I hey, listen. Today when you, you see what he, he tossed did? you today, huh? He tossed me, but he also got me in side control. Yeah. And he stepped. He's doing everything. He's doing the right shit at the yeah. wrong time. But it still worked. What did I do? You got me. In, you got me in half guard. And you stepped on my arm. Oh yeah. Tremendous. Tremendous. <laughs> tremendous. I, tremendous. I took that from class. Tremendous. Yeah. 
But it's supposed to be the side control yeah, step on yeah, my arm. Right. Doesn't matter. Yeah. You remembered. I just <laughs> doesn't matter. Because you kept moving the arm, and I was like, I just want to get this arm out of the. Doesn't fucking matter. Leg. You had yeah. me, and I had you in sight, in, uh, in, uh, half, in, guard. in half guard. Right. You went all the way over and stepped on my arm. Yeah, it's okay. fucking beautiful. Yeah, beautiful. Completely fucking unorthodox. <laughs> but who gives a fuck? It worked. You thought anything well, goes. In see jiu-jitsu. here, I didn't really. I was going to ask you. Didn't you say? A couple months ago, like the worst thing for a man is to think. The, was worst that you? Thing. Worst thing. Because I was just thinking. Like, worst thing. You can't fall asleep. Your dick won't get hard. <laughs> if you're thinking about your future right there, go, dick, get hard. Nothing. No. Won't get hard. Nothing right. will happen. Right. And then you just get scared. You have to trust in your instincts and your heart that you're going to wake up and something's good going to happen. You know why something's good going to happen? Because you're going to work. That's why something good's going to happen. Nothing good happens if you watch fucking three black dudes arguing on Mel's whatever show at 9 a.m. Nothing happens. Right. About whose father is it or, <laughs> you know, what gang member. Nothing happens. <laughs> Nothing. You know, you have more of a chance of something happening if you get up, took a newspaper, went to no whole diner and sat there. Somebody will come up to you and go, you looking for a job? No, I'm just sitting here. Reading. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking for a fucking job. <laughs> Nothing happens at the fucking house. Right. And, and, and thinking. Dog, I told you, when I was five years younger than you. I used to shit. I used to shit out of my ass, and then I, the last push, a little bit of blood would come out on the thing. I'd look it down, and it looked like I got shot with buckshot. It'd be like six little stains of blood. I'd faint, and, I, and one day I went to the doctor, and he goes, there's nothing wrong with you. He took my blood, actually. Told you, stick a butterfly here, put yeah. the arm. But what if he, who gives uh. a fuck about it? There's no what if. Put your arm right here. Leave it there. Grab it. Go ahead. That's, and this, I, <laughs> I credit 10 good things that I do in my life to those early years of martial arts. My first martial art training started when I was five. I got hit in the head with a flashlight. And I was buck wild and my mom didn't know what to do. I didn't know about the language. So she put me in a black martial arts school. With black geese on 90th Street, with <laughs> Laranjo, whatever, his father, Renato Laranjo's okay. father. Okay, oh, okay. And this okay. guy used to map, he said it a thousand times on the show, unorthodox shit. Yeah. Sometimes you get there and he'd stretch out and go, everybody put your sneakers on, we're going for a run. And you'd have to run up and down your neighborhood with your gi on. So the next day you go to school right. and those wise guys in the corner would go, hey, Mr. Karate, yeah. let's do this. <laughs> and shit. We saw you running around. I mean, he made, who, who makes you run today right, with your right. gi on? The whole yeah, clash, yeah. the whole hour yeah. you ran. John Jack does it in Malibu. Today we're going to yeah. run today. Yeah. Forget yeah. jiu-jitsu today, kick him. We're going to go for a little <laughs> run. You're like, oh, yeah. no, Central Park. He used to check your report card. Oh, okay, he used nice. to make sure your gi Tie it all in. was yeah. folded Clean. In, dog, yeah. your gi, there was no oh. bags in those days. There was no bags, Mike. Ah, no bags. <laughs> you had to take your gi, fold it, size it up in front of him, take the arm, fold it, right. smear it down as wet as it was, smear it down. And then you had to take your pants off, shake them, tie them, pull the back, fold them, and make them the same size right. of the gi. Tie it with a belt, tie and it then with your belt. All the yeah. way up like a ball, and then you take your belt and you put it through and you looped it like you right. check show. And that's how you walk to school. When I got my yellow belt, I took that gi everywhere. <laughs> when I was seven, I got my yellow belt or six, I took that yellow belt everywhere. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. School? Everywhere. Anywhere I could carry that gi. And I got my green belt. In those days it was yellow, green, purple, brown, and black. Okay. I went all I stayed with Laranja till Maybe uh, I was 10, 1973, because then I would just go on Saturdays. When I went to Catholic school in Jersey, I would just go on Saturdays. He taught me not to be embarrassed. I was very insecure uh-huh. about myself. Right. Very, like, he taught me not to be embarrassed, do your motherfucking thing. Good. You know, he taught me to, to, to stretch and stay in shape. Like, he, you know, he was one of those dudes that he, you stretched and did calisthenics at, before class. Right. And after class. After, yeah. After yeah. he really. That's really important. He really yeah. did the jumping jack. Yeah. And then he would tell you, if you're not in my class three days a week, I can't pass you. Hmm. You're not going to be eligible yeah, for the there's, test. Yeah, there are standards. Standards. You know? So yeah. you had to be there three days yeah. a week. Come win, place, and show. At the quarter, when you got your report card, he knew. Whether you went to class That's that great. day or not, a copy of your report card had to be uh, copied hmm. and That's dropped off at his office. And if you didn't have the grades, he wouldn't teach you. He'd make you come in and. You want to be a bum? You want to be a janitor? 
you sweep, you do gl- dog. And wow. parents would go, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 He doesn't want to be a fucking smart guy. He wants to be a janitor. Okay. We'll give you your training Start right now. Start them now. Bathrooms, yeah. windows. <laughs> and you know how many p- kids quit in those days? And their parents said, oh, we're going yeah. home. Zero. Oh. Zero. We got a D. Fuck them. Go, take them home, Mr. Wong, and let them clean your fucking house, too. That was a martial art. That's yeah. a mar- yeah. that. That's fucking huge. That is. We don't care about your $60 or $50 a month. If you don't get Bs, you can't come to the school. Oh, wow. That's good. That's it. Sorry. Sorry. And you know what? I'm not going to teach you, but you're still going to come all through the semester. Yeah. You, I'm going to let you spar, and I'm going to let you clean. So for 45 minutes, you're going to come, and since you want to be a janitor, you could sweep and do the toiletries. And, and that's know. it. That's oh, that. my God. How I'm bad. And oh, that is Not worse. one kid quit. Right. So had you, were you done by the time you got left back? Because that, that would have probably sent them to the deep end. I'll tell you what happened. Let me tell you. Again, very interesting. I had no problems. Uh, six, first grade, second grade, third grade, they put me in Catholic school. Fourth grade, there was no problems. Fifth grade was when I threw the nun over, when I hip tossed her. And that's a move I learned in the martial The flying life. nun, huh? The flying nun, dog. <laughs> you know, he didn't teach just karate. He would teach you uh, if somebody had you in a headlock, yeah, how to take their good. finger a and more realistic twist them and, around. Yeah. Every once in a while, yeah. he got into street stuff. That's Mr. great. This was a real I do that too. martial art. Fuck yeah. the gi today, fuck yeah. everything. What happens if somebody comes up to you with a knife? What are you going to do? Let me at least give you the basics yeah. to get you out of it. Shit yeah. like that in class with a rubber knife and yeah, shit. Yeah. Tremendous. Yeah. And you sit there going, I don't want to learn this. Right. But at the end of the class, you're like, wow. No, absolutely. What were we talking about? About getting left back. Getting left back. Okay. When I started dry humping New Yorker reason and sucking a little titties and shit, <laughs> it drove me so crazy that that was the first time I had ever taken a break from martial arts. Oh, that summer? That no, I started I started messing around with her that January. Oh. And I went all the way to karate. To, in fact, I got a, a belt that holiday. You always got a belt oh, Christmas. Okay, you always okay. got a belt every 6 months you got a, a stripe or right, a belt right, if right. you went. And I got a belt. I got like a green belt in Ishinru Karate, which oh. is Goju. Yeah. This guy was his name was Kevin Norlander. And he was built like you. He was a no. He wasn't a nice person. He was a Vietnam vet. He was okay. angry about the benefits. Agent okay. Orange. Right, right. But this guy had a great school. I heard he still teaches. Oh. Julio Rodriguez called on the podcast about a year ago. Yeah. He teaches that same style somewhere in Middle New Jersey. I looked him up. He's, How old wow. is he? Wow. It's got to be sixty something, seventy. Yeah. But Kevin Norlander had a tight school too. A lot of form, and that's where I went. But that. December, I started watching Donnie and Marie with her, and I'm not going to go to class Friday. And then I was so jealous that I just went wherever she went. Oh, like that's okay. the first time I ever fell in love, guys. Right. You followed her around town. How, well, how old were you? In the seventh grade, the first okay. time. Okay. And all I did was we, we would leave school together, go to my house, dry hump. She'd go home. I'd walk her home. Then I'd go home, eat dinner, and I'd go right back to her house like a little fucking. Uh, it was the first time I ever fell in love. Yeah, yeah. yeah. First <laughs> time I ever then you left love. the martial arts behind for a little while, right? Oh, yeah. ma- martial arts. Listen. This <laughs> is a thing, the geek. You know, yeah. There's a thing called pussy. Have you guys ever heard of it? Or are you going to sit here and throw kicks like a bunch of fucking fags? Or you 14-year-olds. I'm at home dry humping, sucking titties, and you're here doing push-ups like assholes. Yeah. But you know what? I stopped studying. I dropped. Everything. I dropped athletics. Uh. I dropped lifting weights in the garage. I dropped going to Mario Diaz's house. I slept and ate and lived this girl mm-hmm. because she told me we were going to start dating that June. After <laughs> school finished, we were going to start dating. I could sleep with her. Oh. I mean, any chance I got to make out with her, I yeah, did. Yeah. There was three months we didn't even make out. We just put our lips together. That's how much of a homo I was. <laughs> if I knew what I knew now, I'd tell her, get the fuck out of my face. I'm going to sit there and do this. One time, her grandmother came to the movies with us. Fuck you. You think I would do that today? Fuck you and your fucking grandmother. I don't care. <laughs> Old school, she sucked dick too. Everybody sucks dick. Everybody sucks dick. Stop it. <laughs> I swear to God, her grandmother used to come. That's the worst, because movies is the only place you have as a kid. Guys, yeah. her grandmother used to come, and let me tell you how much of a fag Joe Diaz was. I was happy to go there and sit between the grandmother and her, and I'd enjoy it like a half a fag. Like, oh, my God, <laughs> this is so great going to movies with Grandma. I loved them. I loved her, and all I thought about, I remember once she let me just touch her pussy from the outside. 
guys, I don't have to tell you. We've all been 13. You can't even eat. You can't do nothing. There's nothing in the world that matches that thing. Right, and right. I quit martial arts. And I got, uh, that. they sent me to summer school. I stayed on her, stayed on her. And once that cold reality was, I got left back. It took me about a month to go. Mm. I remember walking in there and him going, I don't even know who you are. Like just, he, in those days, they weren't very nice. They didn't right, care right. about the money in those days. In those days, rent was 100 bucks. Either you show up or yeah, you don't. Yeah, it's yeah. my personal gym, if not. Right. If you don't right. show up, it's right. my personal gym. Yeah. Insurance was $3 a month. You know, it yeah. didn't, really didn't matter if you show. <laughs> I just come in and throw sidekicks. So I'm going, I'm going back after like seven or eight months. And I'm going, first off, I'm stripping your belt. Oh. Okay, you're no wow. longer a green belt because six it's, months you're an elephant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. it. You're in, yeah, but I argued you're a little saying, bit. Yeah. But I felt so bad inside. I felt like such a loser. And after two months, he gave me back my green belt. That's he made good. me go back and test. And he goes, I'm going to give you. I don't know what happened. And he told me, what happened? And yeah. I told him I got left back. And he's like, dog, you're an intelligent kid. What happened? I told him. I fell in love. That's right. why I didn't right. come. I had right. never been in love before. And you're a kid. And, yeah, Guys, yeah. I used to go to school. Like, So then once she told me that we couldn't date, that she wasn't ready. The last day of school, this dirty bitch told me, uh, I'm not ready yet. I snapped. Could have been a blue belt and by then. now I was, yeah, I could have been. I was really on her. I was really on her. And I remember going to school, sitting in summer school for an hour. And, just and going to the nurse and going, oh. I can't take this. I want to dry on her. Yeah. And that's all I did. Guys, I was not even fucking her. Wow. This is how sad and pathetic yeah. I was as a yeah. young man. Yeah. That's why I don't like when people fall in love. Because when I went, I went deep. Right, right. I mean, I wasn't even fucking her. She was at, towards in the middle of the summer. She started taking off her shirt. And I was like, you know. <laughs> it's on. <laughs> it's on. <laughs> She would let me dry on her without her shirt on. Two little skinny tits. It doesn't the, matter. It's yeah. seventh grade, yeah. though. In right. the seventh grade. And I remember my dad caught her in the closet once. And that was the end. She's like, see, I told you. I'll never show you my titties again. And that oh, was it. Gosh. So after that, we fucking broke up, whatever. And I went back and, to karate. Right. And my life changed completely. When I got left back, that was it. Because if my mother found out, my mother would take the trust she had given me. All those years. My mom had a deal. You take care of business, I leave you alone. What's take care of business? Do your own laundry. Seventh grade. Yeah, Seventh yeah. grade. Do your own laundry. Because my mom would go, I do laundry twice a week. Right. You want to wear the jeans? I can't give them back to you. But if you want to do them, be sure, my guest. Sure, there's, sure. there's a washing machine and downstairs. Let me teach you how it's done. Yeah, that's good for you. That's, that's good for you. Yeah. She taught me. And yeah. then I also learned how to wake up in the morning. Yeah. There was no more honey. Yeah. Get up. Here's some orange juice. No, yeah. there was no more. You don't go to yeah. school. You don't go to school. You don't go to school. You can't go out. You can't come up and work. So right. if you miss school, you're late. So once I got left back, I made sure nothing happened. It's like driving right. with a warrant. You ever drive with a warrant? Not yet. You stop <laughs> at lights completely. Right, you right. park. You, you parallel look, park. You look. You yeah. look. Oh, yeah. It's the same yeah. thing. I was driving with a warrant. After I got left back, because yeah. my mom didn't know I got left back. So I went back to that karate school that October, flaming. And I would, I would go to karate and practice basketball. Good. I fucking said, fuck women. Yeah. I will jerk off till my head blows up. I don't ever want that feeling again of being broken hearted. Right, that right. was the most horrible feeling. See, I got that shit out of the way at 13 yeah, yeah, or 12. Yeah. Once a pussy, I got left back because of pussy. If I'm not the <laughs> dumbest kid, you you know. Like when you guys come up to me after a show and go, that was great. I want you to think about that the guy you're telling this is great. And it wasn't even real sex. Not even, a- not even close. It wasn't like I was eating a pussy or sticking a finger up her ass and fucking up her world. I was doing Zelcho, sitting at the movie theater. I think about that now. And I want to fucking punch myself in the face. I would allow, like sitting with the grandma, I'm like, you want popcorn? I'll go get your popcorn. Fuck you, bitch. If I knew what I knew today, I would have told the you and your fucking granddaughter could both suck my dick. Who's first? I don't give a fuck about Titanic. I don't give a fuck about Titanic. I came here to get your daughter's pants. Not, I swear to God, the grandmother oh, used to God. come to the fucking movie theater, oh, guys. Oh, my God. She'd oh. drive you there and uh, the whole thing or what? No, we took a yeah. bus to even really embarrass me right now on this fucking show. <laughs> <laughs> to really let people know. Because I'm honest with you guys. I'm a loser. I told you guys. Nothing you took a bus with the grandma and her. 
Were you holding hands with the grandmother and what? <laughs> What's Guys, that? with a shirt on, I'd bring a flower for the grandmother. If I wasn't a total ass wipe, <laughs> a total fucking ass wipe. But there's something kind of nice about it, though. There was nothing there, nice. Looking back at it, there was nothing nice. <laughs> nothing, nothing, nothing. I was a complete failure as a man. <laughs> a failure. I let pussy dominate me completely. Is that like, what, 14? 13, 13, seventh grade, first yeah. time. You know, I had hair on the side. That's of when they wake up to it. Yeah, I had oh, hair yeah. on the side of my dick. That's when you don't have hair in the middle. That's a tough. Your face. dick is like bozo. <laughs> the sides are packed, but the middle still empty. You can't even show your dick to nobody right. because they're like, "What happened? What happened to the patch? What happened?" <laughs> it's that's, that's when you're gonna trim the bushes on the side. Make that sidewalk a little bigger. You know. I think about that <laughs> with that fucking girl and the shit I went through for those two years. And it was horrendous. I got left back. And I got to tell you, prison, prison, my mother dying, you know, being labeled a thief when I was a kid, being a thief, being, you know, a piece of shit thief, nothing matched up to the feeling Mm. of getting left back. Of, of, because the last day of school, you go to your, you spend half the day with your teacher, and then that was also your first letdown. That was your first horrible. Yeah, that was something. The first one. Listen, anything could have happened in my life. That was that was not supposed to happen. Right. right. When you're a dumb kid, that happens. But when you, especially when you're on that path, you're on a path, and also all I did was listen, take notes. Lee and I have discussed this a thousand times. Right. If you go to class every day, yeah, with an open mind, and you take little notes. 1699 Columbus, mm-hmm. whatever his friend was, Jose Cortez. Right. You just write little notes. And every night when you go to sleep, you just look at those notes. By the time you get to October, the finals, yeah. you got three quarters there. Yeah. Instead of studying 12 hours, you study six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These are the things you're I ahead. figured out you're ahead. that yeah. I knew. I knew. And this is the scary thing. Because of martial arts, I knew this. Mm-hmm. But that year when I fell in love with Nikki, I didn't mm-hmm. care about that. I you depend- lost your head. I depended yeah. on the class and the notes. And guys, the pussy had me so much, I, I, I didn't even care about the grades. Like, I didn't care about anything. Like, I didn't sweep anymore. I didn't take the garbage out of my house. Right, the right. bushes were long. My mom's like, what's going on with you? And you weren't even getting anything. Nothing. That's- guys, nothing. <laughs> nothing. It is so fucking embarrassing. But then I went back to martial arts. And I got to tell you something. That year and a half, that seventh grade, second time, and eighth grade, and anybody who listens to the podcast and grew up with me, I became a tremendous basketball player. Mm. I mean, when I first got into basketball... And you were doing martial arts at the same time? The same yeah. time. Yeah. I figured out how to juggle. Okay. Because that's what I didn't want to do anymore. My freshman year, I played freshman basketball. Right. And I'm taking a bus. When I get home at fucking six, I got to eat and take a bus to Union City to make the men's class at seven to get beat up. And yeah, I had the energy, but... Come on. Yeah. I want to do homework and get good grades. So forget fucking karate, you know? Right. That's what happened, my friend. That's what happened. And then when I, when I, I got back into it, I got to tell you, my grades went up again. I had a schedule. I had hmm. somewhere to be to report to myself. When you're a child and your mother doesn't drive you to martial arts right. and you get there yourself, it's a different thing. When you oh, take yeah. a butt. And in those days, I took a, I walked up the hill in North Bergen, which... You've been to North Bergen, you know the fucking hill I walked up, the, yeah. Chinese, the, 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 the Chinese restaurant all the way to the top of the yeah. sea is. And then I'd go to the bar, and sometimes I'd take a, a cab from my mother's bar to 16th Street, where the karate school was, which is 13 blocks. Mm. But after karate, I'd walk to the bar. Yeah. I'd walk to the bar, I'd cross the street, I'd go to New Moon Chinese Restaurant, wow. because I was total, it's like people, Brazilians, like people go to jiu-jitsu, eat acai bowl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, they go to a Brazilian steakhouse. No, 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 in those days, I left fucking karate, yeah, and even Chinese. though it was Japanese, I went to the New Moon Chinese Restaurant. You know what, yeah. you know what I used to eat in those days? What? Chicken chow mein. That's all I used to eat. <laughs> the celery with all the shit in the t- bottom. Yeah, it's yeah. like a pot pie. And yeah, I'm, yeah. And My mom I'm, used to make that. And then I'm yeah, topped yeah. it with put little skinny chi- uh, white meat chicken. Right. And all those little noodles. Those all, hard noodles, those right? Those hard yeah, noodles. Yeah. And all I yeah. ate was the hard noodles and the oh, chicken. Yeah. The rest, fuck you. Celery's for stiffs. <laughs> and I would eat the rice and get the fuck right. out of there. That's right. what I used to eat. So I would walk 13 blocks after basketball practice and motherfucking karate, dog. Mm. Stay at my mother's bar, joke around, take a 20 from her, and then I'd get a cab back home. That was my life. But that karate, those three years, really put me on track. And then I started doing drugs. I started smoking pot. And one day I brought it up amongst my karate geeks, and they went pale. 
Like I just told my karate geeks, I tell you what I did the other night. I smoked some pot. And I thought they were going, oh yeah, let's get some. They hey, were man. like, oh, they were up. like, hey man, that's fucked up. You know that that, that you're gonna be doing acid soon. I'm like, no, I'm not. I just tried marijuana. Dog, they did like their own kid intervention. They yeah. used to call me every night. You're not smoking pot with those animals in North Bergen, I because these were Spanish kids from Union City. They had a they had just come back from Cuba. They were they were very militant and they were anti drugs and huh. shit. We were like a team. We were right. gonna be the next Bruce Lee's. We were how can you smoke pot? And I was like, guys, it's all because these guys would just get together <laughs> and talk martial arts for eight hours. Right, we right. didn't drink. We didn't do anything. We went to a, like a kung fu movie, and then we where we all jerked off at the movie. Wow, wow! And then we'd take like we'd stop and eat like something in Chinatown. At least we did that. We yeah, had young yeah. balls. Yeah. We go to like a Chinese place that sold like those Bruce Lee shirts. And, right, right. And then we take a bus home. That's what we did on Saturday. Yeah, yeah. When I was with my friends on Saturday from North Bergen, fuck you. We got up early, we went to the fucking chink store, we ate pork fried rice, then we'd go up to fucking the college club and get a $10 bag of angel dust, and we'd oh. snort it and take a bus into the city and go to 42nd Street and eat a fucking gyro at Helen Aramidi's fucking father's place, and then we'd fucking go, fuck it, let's walk up Broadway and play three-card Monty. And we'd play three-card Monty, and then somebody would have a joint, and we'd smoke another fucking joint, we'd walk all the way up to like the 50s, and then take a fucking A train up to Harlem and walk around there, and we'd that be people on the streets, guys going, come on in, see nude women. And we'd go in there and sit down, and all of a sudden, a black chick would sit next to you and show you her titties. And then she'd go, you want to see more? You got to buy me a bottle of champagne. And you go, give the woman a bottle of champagne. And they come back and go, 80 bucks. And you go, $80? I only got 650 Get the fuck out of here. And they would throw you back on Broadway. And all this is going on when you're on fucking angel dust, okay? All this is going on. You're dealing with black people. How old are you? 13, 14. <laughs> We're in the fucking city, six or seven deep. Lee, can Carlos, you believe he's still alive? Me, huh? Carlos Perez, <laughs> Dominic Special, fucking getting <laughs> fucked up. We wouldn't even know who the fuck we were till we got the Port Authority on 178 Street. Now, what would you rather do? Spend an afternoon with us doing angel dust when you're 13 or spend an afternoon with Bruce Lee and his cousins fucking doping around talking about karate tournaments on next week? The answer now or when I was 13? When I was 13, the answer now is I would I, I would have stuck it out with yeah. those fucking no. geeks. Yeah. I would have been a complete different I'm person. I'm the other way. The, the answer when I was 13 would have been the karate guys. That fucking sounds... Walking around on angel dust. Oh, my God. And going to fucking spots I in probably Harlem. never even heard of angel dust. And Juan Ali took him, taking us to the... To the because I went to the 1040 Club with the other ones, but Juan Ali used to go to a different place where they'd fucking wash your dick and then wash your dick in a little tub, like under the bed, and then they'd put a condom on you, and you'd fuck an old beat-up woman for 10 bucks for 12 50 she'd let you lick a pussy and shit. Oh, Juan Ali and his brother Alberto were the kings of that. They worked at their dad's shoe store. He gave them like a check for 50 and they looked at that check and said, for $12, that's four fucking lays in one day. Oh, and they'd go to the city and go to four different hooker houses for 1250 a piece and fuck different hookers. I didn't hang out with those guys. But I'm just saying. Was there a lot of this in Rye, New York? Fuck no. no. These kids are nice white kids. They don't bother nobody. <laughs> now, but I grew up in Connecticut, though. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I was born in uh, Port Chester and Rye. But yeah. that's, that's, oh my God. That was <laughs> fucking nuts. So right away, I'm like, wait a second. So I would still keep my relationship with these little geeks at the karate school. Yeah. Instead of hanging out with them all four Saturdays, I would hang out with them two Saturdays, you know. And right, right. No angel dust? No, we go oh, to like no. a tournament in the Bronx and they'd break down this fighter. Like, let's go see this guy, John Budd. He's, he's a fucking black belt. And we go watch John Budd fight. And wow, look at the way he throws a the kick. Then we go back to like uh, one of the kids' apartments and we do the move oh, yeah, that we yeah. watch John Budd do in a tournament. 80 times till 2 in the morning till somebody's parent was like don't you guys have a fucking home get the fuck out of my house it's 11 30 and you guys are throwing sidekicks in my living room <laughs> that's the geeks that these guys yeah. were they didn't even drink like i remember going you guys want to get a bottle of, like strawberry uh boone's farm oh no 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 dog i couldn't take it no more i want to get some pussy i want to get my dick sucked what do you think you would have turned out like without weed like I'm just, when you said that, I couldn't even imagine you Listen, like a nerd. <laughs> let me tell you something, man. The last thing I was ever going to do was drugs. Mm -hmm. When I hung out with those karate kids, I, I, I ever, ever, I saw my mom snorting blow. I saw them smoking pot. I did not like alcohol as a kid. Till this day, I don't like fucking alcohol. I don't like even being around drunk people. That's why when I get off stage, I go to fuck home. 
because I don't like it. I didn't like it when I was fucking five. Right. I really it's don't terrible. like alcohol. But when I was seven and eight, I really hated drugs. I was growing a fucking plant one day. I loved this plant. It was a school project in the first grade. And one day I woke up and the plant was gone. My mother and the Puerto Rican babysitter took the plant out because it resembled marijuana. And they rolled it up and tried to smoke it. I'm like, are you fucking crazy? So my mom had to take me to a plant store and get a plant. I got an A, but that's not the moral of the story. The moral of the story is they stole my fucking pot plant. They stole my plant. because Did they, she say that to you? Was she like, yeah, we right we to thought my it fucking was face. My mom didn't lie to me. She told me right to my face. And it face. wasn't a pot plant at all. Right? No, they just thought it was a pot plant. <laughs> You know, so right away I hated <laughs> fucking drugs. I always hated drugs. I hated it. I go to that fucking like I said the other night when I go to the Bruce Lee movies. Yeah. And I go to the bar. What would I? Say? I told you. I said I didn't know what I was gonna walk into. I could walk into an argument, or I could walk into a, a bar with twenty adults who all have rings around their nose, mm -hmm. talking, and I could tell. And I look at my mother, and I'd see her hand moving. And I'm like, these motherfuckers are doing blow. And I go in the back and. Watch uh, a, a something. In those days, there was no VCR, direct TV. <laughs> Television shut off at 1. At 1 o'clock, once the national anthem came on, good night. There was nothing. You could fucking go in between channels. There was nothing. That sucks. Sucks. Yeah. yeah. How would my life have turned out? I don't know. But I still dread that day, February 19th. How do you remember it was February 19th? Because there was a karate tournament. Oh, okay. And it was you missed karate, it? And no. You, oh. It was a February tournament, and... That September, I said, you know what I'm going to do? I, I was playing football, guys. I quit playing football my mm -hmm. freshman year. And then my sophomore year, I got a lung infection. From the uh, paraquat? From the paraquat. Mm -hmm. I was still going to karate. It was the summers. So in those days, I would go to the morning class and get it over with. Okay. I'd play basketball in the morning, ride my bike with the gi and the bicycle in the 10 speed. <laughs> this is 10 miles, dog. <laughs> Go down there, do the 10 o'clock class, 11.30 class, whatever it was. You had some dedication. We you hung know? out yeah. we hung, because I knew that yeah. the karate was going to help my basketball. Right, right, We did right. a lot of horse dances, and that's what basketball is. A defense is a horse right, dance. Right, right, right. So in those days, oh, you, oh, here comes Geek Joey. Here comes Geek <laughs> Country. White belt to Geek Joey. Not only was I a geek, but I was also the whitest kid in America at that time. I used to chair sit on the walls for hours. Guys, I could do it for oh, yeah. hours. Yeah. Just to build the stamina? I would do it to a whole side of an album. Wow. Somebody Damn. told me to do it to like a whole side of an album wow. and then get up and walk for three minutes and then do it again. Oh. I took a, I used to write colleges, basketball colleges. Yeah. If I liked the college basketball coach in that day, I would write a coach and say, give me your workout that you train oh, your okay. college basketball players. And every college coach in the Division I ranks had a – Standard sure, copied sure. workout, and they would send right. them to me. Wow! And wow. Bill Foster from Duke said that half my uh, in the preseason practices, like before the season, not right. to worry about. I got to get their legs ready for the forty-four minute games. Right. So at the end of practice, he would sit, sit them on the wall. Wow. You know what that is when you yeah, sit you just, yeah, yeah. and just sit yeah. and fucking next to your legs are burning. Oh yeah. I already had the experience from the horse stance. Yeah, yeah. Because fucko, Renato Rolange's father, super black. Would fucking make us do yeah, yeah. horse dances. And sit there, right? Dog, the yeah. whole class. Today, we're not yeah. going to do nothing. You ready? Horse dance. Us. <laughs> and that was it. Yeah. Okay. Nobody move. Oh, Nobody uh, move. What's he, the longest you ever sat in that? Do you in remember? a horse dance? Yeah. The, the guys, this is when you're fucking 10 and 8. Yeah. I can't. Yeah. I, you want me to lie to you? 30 yeah. minutes, maybe? That's a long time. I used to do the wall ones, an yeah. album aside. Right. That's a long time. Like the beach boys. And then, when you, then your legs start shaking and you start sweating. Breathe, and, breathing, yeah. breathing, oh, breathing, yeah. breathing, breathing, yeah. breathing, breathing. Yeah, that's rough. Your ankles hurt and your knees hurt and yeah. Didn't but, matter. And I had yeah. a 10 speed the next day to right. work it out. Right. Up that fucking North Bergen Hill. Right. Jesus. But that, you know, I blame part of my work, work ethic on my mother. The other work ethic, what I, the situation I got put into at my early age. But the other part of that work ethic, I blame on the martial arts hmm. because it wasn't learning how to fight that I wanted to do. There was a time when I got a passion for forms, right. which is a complete different world. When you have a passion for forms, you're going to end up being a comedian. Mm -hmm. You're going to end up being something creative because all a form is is your expression. That was you know the biggest trophy yeah. I ever yeah. won. Yeah. I yeah. won first place. Form. In the, in the tournament with like white or yellow belt forms. Oh, really? Yeah, it was oh. the best. It was like how the, old were you? 
first grade. Oh, all right. They, they, I was so small, they picked me up to weigh me. Take a green belt <laughs> form. Do me a favor. Get a green belt form. Uh-huh. And next time me and Leah are in there, let's open the class. I still kind of yeah. remember. So every, they were, it's Leah. like bam, 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 yeah, bam, yeah, bam. That was the basic And then you turn, yeah. maybe a front right. kick in there. You do ten forms a day. Ten, you seven, know, de- five days a week. That's it. Yeah. They're great exercise. Oh, and, and people, well, 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 they don't yeah. do nothing for you in the street. Listen, no, it's not about the street. It's not. It's about, you know how, okay. It's homework. Geek Joey, yeah. Geek Joey coming. <laughs> I used to tie a string from the cabinets in the garage to the garage door. <laughs> and I used to do the walks down the middle yeah. with the string on my head. Jesus. Okay, and that was how crazy Joey was. And then as, as the <laughs> tournament got, I remember how it was. As close as we got to the tournament, I lower would the make, string, right? No, I would lower my head. Oh, okay. And then okay. lower the string. Okay. Geek Joey. That's Geek Why Joey. Why did your head have to be lower? <laughs> because your form. You want, yeah. your, you, want your, stay low. you want your forms, your hips to be perfect, and your knee, and your hamstring, and your, your, your hip. Like they looked in those days, those judges looked at everything. Yeah. How your leg hanged. If you're, you didn't point like that. First, we learned just to throw the punch, but then they wanted you to aim and sure, throw the punch. Sure. All those little things were points. Yeah. So once you get into that form, sometimes I go on stage and I think about a form. Mm-hmm. I think I look at it as a form. Mm-hmm. That's the easiest way I'm going to remember my material. I'm well, sorry. I, I just admitted yeah. that. Yeah. That's, that's good. It that's, works, though. It works. Yeah. If I don't look at my material as a form, I will not remember it. Right, right. But that doesn't mean you're not in in the moment. It just means that's how you remember the it gets set. Gets ready. Yeah. yeah. The nice thing about a form too, you can do it any way you want to do it. You can do a hard one. You can do a soft one, a long one, a high one. You know, you can do it until you're 80. But I, uh, you know, I do enjoy doing them. You know I who's do. really good at people who do forms? Who? People who have the patience to do it. Over. Yeah, yeah. Listen, the pa- yeah, let me yeah. tell you over something. You have no idea what it's like over. to do 20 forms. You have no, and that's what Norlanda was the oh, king yeah. of. Norlanda on a Saturday, it was form Saturday. You know what form Saturday was? All class, same form. Right. We're going to do it 10 times. And then we're going to break it into pieces, what the form means, yeah. why his hands are low. He's blocking a low kick. Throw that yeah. kick. He would do that into sequences. And then guess what? Another 10 times. And this time we're going to drop an inch on everybody. So your legs. And then sometimes he'd stop. Stop right in that position. Stay there two minutes. Breathe. Think about what that position is. Right. The opponent's going to shift on you now. Yeah. You're going to turn your head to the left. It was beautiful. Oh, yeah. And it, it's, I've never heard about it like that. That's really cool. Oh, my God. But yeah. you know what? By the eight, six, remember when we did kettlebells the other day? Remember when that motherfucker said, okay, we're going to go 10 for 10 now? In 10 <laughs> minutes, everybody goes, I don't think so. Like, I kept telling Lee. Who's was it, Yogi Steve, yeah, outlier strength? Yeah, I was going to do <laughs> five. In my mind, I go, I'll do right? five, and I'm tapping right. out. But then we all got into such an energy that it was, if I would have been alone, if we would have been alone, all of us would have gone, five is good. But yeah, yeah, yeah. your energy, my energy, oh, you feel forms are great yeah. by yourself. But when four of us are all doing oh. them together, oh, we yeah. all look and all our heads went like this at the same oh, time. Sure. You ever Come been? On, guy. You ever been in a room and there are fifty of you? That's it, man. The energy doing a form. Oh yeah, you get fifty people in, in a room doing the same form. You'll get that key eye together. It's it's a great feeling. It really is. Yeah, forms are great. They really are. You know, when I take a private down at down at VMAC with Taichiro, well, that guy. I mean. You know, he wins He wins in the world. He does his katas. His katas are really crisp. And it's because, like what you said, he does them over and over and over and over and over and over again. When What's I, life about? When I, yeah, it's What's life over about? and over and over and over. How many over. discussions yeah. have we had here, Lee? Yeah. What is same life thing. about? It's the same thing. Going back and doing the same thing over so and over. So that's yeah. where martial yeah. art comes that's in it. again. That's it. That's the guy who goes to the basement at right. 10 o'clock and goes, I'm not going upstairs until 9.30. It. You keep polishing Bam, bam. Yeah. Never mind. In yeah. those days, we didn't have cameras. 
It wasn't like we thought about putting a camera. Right, right. Those are the sickest motherfuckers. That was yeah. in 94 in, yeah. in Boulder. Yeah. White boy Magoo, he'd have four cameras. Right. And then at night. He studies back, himself. Yeah. And then at oh, night, yeah. you come back, yeah. you get pizza. Right. And he go, you see right there, put that. And I wasn't even competing in Thorn. No, I was, I yeah. was doing stuff. So he'd record thorn. himself every day and then watch All, the night. class. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The class. Yeah. Lee, get to the middle. Do uh, Il Sushik number one, two, three, and do Bokok Puta one. Okay, boom. <laughs> and he tape you from two angles. You get one of the red right, belts right. from the other angle. And then that night you come back after dinner. This is how crazy this white boy was. He was filthy it, rich. It helps, He though. called me a few yeah. years ago. He got my number. He congratulated me. I go, what's going on? He goes, I sold the school. He, he had a little school. Then he bought a bigger school. And then MMA came, and the school that there's the biggest MMA in Boulder is yeah. his old school. Wow. He sold it, made some money, and went back to doing blow and asked uh. me. He told me he was on probation for something. I asked him if he still practiced. He goes, I haven't thrown a kick in like eight years wow. since I sold the school. Wow. And it really, and that's what my point is about all this. It kept me together. Yeah. So yeah. that September, when I had the lung infection, I couldn't play basketball. Like, I had to come to terms and go, I'm five foot ten. It's not going to happen. I'm Cuban. I'm not, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm fast, but I'm not quick. Right. You know what I mean? Big fucking difference when you shoot hoops. Oh, yeah. I had nothing, Lee. And now all I had was Kevin Norlander. And I went, and I went. And then I, I went to a couple tournaments with him, with the fucking geeks. Right. And I took a first. I would either take a first in fighting or I'd take a first in uh, forms. Comments. In forms. Yeah. And I think about it now. And then in January, I went to two competitions where I ate dick and forms, and I got disqualified for contact. Uh, what? Yeah. Two tournaments I it, went. I kicked happens. above the head. Yeah, that happens. And you know why? Because I wanted to fuck. At that <laughs> time, I hadn't fucked yet, and that was the big thing in the neighborhood, to fuck somebody. And I was frustrated, and I just wanted to fuck. And I was hoping <laughs> if I kicked this guy real hard in the fucking head, uh, some chick, little Chinese chick with a gi would suck my dick. I was frustrated. I don't think I've ever kicked anybody in the head. Oh, my God. <laughs> all my kicks are always in range. <laughs> I didn't hurt nobody. I didn't, I didn't oh, no, hurt I'm just anybody. Saying, I'm just saying I'm, was, also, I'm so short. <laughs> it was in those days. Let me tell you how safe they were. If you didn't wear the knee things down, the arms. In those days, it was oh, this rubber yeah. stuff they sold that I didn't like at all. It was too sweaty. It stunk. And they it was the beginning of the that type of protection. It wasn't really gloves. It was a, a pad for everything. But in those days, they were so safe. Yeah, the these, helmet on and everything. Yeah, yeah. in those days, it was so safe at the kids' tournaments that even if you kicked above the throat level, mm. seven inches, if the guy went like that, disqualification. Oh, wow. So I got disqualified twice. Mm. And I said, you know what? I'm gonna, he kept saying, there's that Cherry Hill open. There's the Cherry Hill open, you know, or whatever the fuck it was. It was like an hour from my house. And right. like, you know what I'm going to do? Tell you what I'm going to do. And I told myself this in my head. I said, I'll tell you what I'm going to do on my 15th birthday. I'm going to go down to that tournament. I'm going to take first place in form. I'm going to take first place in fighting. That's mm. it. I'm not fucking around with these motherfuckers no more. Damn. And guess what I'm doing after that? Banging. Quit. Oh, you quit. <laughs> oh, so you're going to go out on the top. Go That's out on the top. Yeah. Tournament started at 10 in the morning. I wake up. I'm 15 years old. My mom and my stepdad had split. My mom had lost the bar. The house wasn't doing too well. I wake up my 15th birthday. I look outside. There's a foot and a half of snow. My heart is broken. I've just trained like a madman. Uh -huh. Running, kicking, you know, doing wind sprints with the track team at mm -hmm. North Bergen. I'm doing everything to get in shape. So I could fucking knock these motherfuckers out and go out. There's a the thing. He couldn't get there. He calls me up. He goes, no, we're going. I'm going to come and get you with my truck. We're on the bottom of the fucking hill. This motherfucker came and got me with 20 kids in a truck. 20 fucking <laughs> Spanish, white, Irish. In like the back of a pickup truck? Everybody. <laughs> get in the back. Let's go. Dress warm. We drove the hour. You know, some <gasps> other parents came. Listen to this fucking story, guys. Drove the hour. Went out there. Boom, I got disqualified for fighting, but I oh. took first and foremost by a, I mean, by a long shot, like tens. Everybody tens, 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 tens. Boom, the four, he came up to me. He's like, dog, you got to control that foot. But I tell you, when it comes to that, we're going to pass you, blah, blah, blah. And I didn't even say nothing. In my heart, I knew. I'm like, I'm not fucking going back. I'm going to oh. go do drugs with my friends. That's it. And I get home about 2 o'clock, and my mom's there with some people. And they're drinking, they're watching like a basketball, they're betting something, whatever those Cubans were betting that day. 
It was the Docampo brothers were at my house. Okay. And one Docampo brother came up to me when I was taking a shower. I was going to the movies in Jersey City to see some. This is how good my memory is. I was going to walk up that hill and take the number one bus to Jersey City with my friends. And he came upstairs and he goes, listen, I didn't bring, buy you anything for your birthday. What number you want to play on your birthday? And it was maybe, I don't know, two. Right. And I go, my birthday, 219. He goes, I'm going to put $10 on 219 for you. I fucking got my boots on. I walked out that door, walked, took the bus. When I come in, there was 10 Cubans in my living room, hammered. My mom was crying. She goes, you motherfucker, you hit the number. How, <laughs> how much is $10? $5,000. Wow. I said, wow. I'm never going back to karate. Oh. <laughs> I got I got 5000 I had to tip him 500 what? What, was what are you going to do, dog? That's the way the Cubans do it. You got to tip the book five. Who told you that, your mom? My mom. My mom was a tipper. What did you say? I, I knew the way she played. My mom always believed that whatever you gave me, I have to give half away to have good karma. So God gave me this amount. This is a great amount. Yeah, yeah. You, we could eat for weeks, but you know what? Maybe John Buddy, you could eat for two more weeks. Boom. Boom. So when I got back, I had to give Arnaud all nickel. I had to give his brother 200 just because he was sitting in the room. Oh, trust me, Lee. I'm a Cuban Jew. I'm burning inside. And guess what? And mommy wanted something. So I had to give her 15 oh. off the top. Oh. So I ended up with whatever it ended up. And my mom told me, you got to go to the hub tomorrow on 30th and Bergen Line and put it in the bank. That's your money for school next year. Mm. And I was like, okay, I'm going to put two G's in the bank. I'm taking a nickel. I'm buying a quarter pound of reefer. <laughs> and that became Jungle Joey's career into the murky waters oh boy. of the underworld. I bought a quarter <laughs> pound of pot from one of my good friends on Facebook. He became a cop years later. It was four ounces for 200 bucks. So I get an ounce for 50 bucks, and I would sell it for 100 Right. Who the right. fuck you think you're dealing with, dog? And then I finance my mescaline business. And that financed my whatever. But listen to me. It was all downhill. And I'm lying to you guys. It was all downhill after that. I got the lung infection. Ugh. I went to the hospital. My mother got sick. And then she died. And there was no coming back. Mm. Until this day, it was the whammy poop in that fucking martial arts tournament. And somebody put a whammy on me. Oh. Oh, what? I'm just teasing you. But my point <laughs> being <laughs> that my compass fell off when I stopped going to that martial art. After that fucking day, my, and that was my freshman year. That was my freshman year in high school. I was turning 15. Mm. It makes sense because that sophomore year was when I got, I couldn't play mm. basketball. I couldn't play football because I started spitting up blood and I had the lung infection. Mm. Two months later, my mother died. Martial arts was the farthest thing from my right, life. Right, right. I never got in martial arts again from that day I was 15. When did, you, when did you go back to martial arts? Do you remember? 1994. Okay. I was 31 years old. Okay. And I joined uh, Subak Do. Okay, okay. Taekwondo, and I okay. stuck it out with him for about a year, 14 and, months. And then did you find in that time, when you went back when you were 31, did your things in your life get better at that My point? My stand-up got superb. Okay, okay. My everyday life was better. I was still a fucking coke fiend. Okay, okay. And I had a bad temper at the time. I was going through a heavy-duty divorce, but that class... Leveled you me. out a little bit. And when, whenever I always know that at that age, I already knew that when you feel bad, if you go home, it's just going to get worse yeah. for you. You're going to think about it, and the walls are going right. to come closing down. Right. So I would just go to his class. Okay. It was okay. $50 unlimited for the month. Right. And he was such a fucking karate dude. You'd go there and burn it out. Seven, yeah. like I said, in the beginning, yeah. I'm not kidding you. Yeah. By himself. Noah said, everybody he had there, he had, when I joined that school, it was in a fucking ballerina studio. Where there was a pole, sure, so sure. all he worked on was kicking. One, two, boom, right. one, and that's all he did for an hour was just pick up your leg, keep it there, keep it there. This is also a block. Okay, he's right. getting close. Right. He's right. in your range. Boom, Dang. explode. Yeah. And that's what we did. And then he goes, I bought a fucking building. He goes, I took my $2.5 billion, but I'm going to turn into a, uh, a karate world. Dog, everything was state of the art. The weights, oh, nice. the punching bag, the mats, they were fucking all taekwondo. I mean, he went, yeah, nah, you know. Yeah. That's why when he sold it, he got top dollar oh, for it. Okay. So I got enamored. I got fuck. I fell in love with it again. That was my outlet. I'd smoke, and he smoked. Okay. okay. So a lot of times you could go there and go, come on, let's go outside and smoke, and then oh. he'd teach a stone. Right, and right. I huh. stuck it out with him. And then I never did it again, and I went to Seattle, and there was a Subak, though. They have a web page. Okay. And I remember going on the web page, and I called around. There were Diaz's 
In fact, up in Seattle, the Diaz's okay. that okay. teach the Subak dub. Okay. And I go, I'm not going there. And then when I came to Hollywood, I moved to Sunset and uh, Vista. Okay, okay. And one day I'm walking on Sunset, and there's a Muda Kwan Subak Do school on Sunset. Right, right. And I remember it, that school. It's still there. It's still yeah, there. Yeah. He still teaches that. Yeah. But at this time, the guy who has it now was an assistant instructor, not getting paid at all, mm. teaching all the classes. The guy was this guy that went nuts. He bought into it. Some movie went to him for some casting thing, and he went nuts. Yeah. When I joined one day, the first thing he gives you is a DVD of him with some production company. He spent millions on him walking down the streets of Sunset, and he gets attacked by black guys, and he takes <laughs> them down with the Subak dough. He gets attacked by Yum Yum, eat him up. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, the guy was just in love with himself. You had never seen this. Oh, I was, in, But I'll tell you what, I saw something that was very embarrassing one day. One day I was just walking by and I saw him in there and I saw both the black belts in the office. And as I walked by, I could tell that they were having a serious comp. Uh, right, right. And he was yelling at his black uh, belts. The students were there, the white, the kids were there, yeah. and the parents were in the hallway. And he was berating them. Mm-hmm. Everybody fucking pays. I'm not running a fucking charity over here. If they're not in by the fifth, fuck them. They cannot train. And some of the parents there were rushing. You know, they are kind of broke. They're getting it together. Right, right. I didn't like him. Well, he sold the school. He took the two million or whoever the production company gave him. and went to Philly and built this huge Taekwondo world. But guess what happened? The UFC came in and everybody wanted to learn jiu-jitsu. Yeah. And he fucking fell apart. His wife left him. Done. So this guy has the school. So I trained in there. I was in there until I was a green belt. Oh, that's good. 400 pounds. 400 pounds. I would go twice a week, reeking of cigarettes and reefer. Reeking. The little kids would even come up to me and go, Ew, you smell. <laughs> night, you, Joe Rogan used to drive by and go in there at night and sit there and watch me do Taekwondo and shake his fucking head. And he'd go, I'm just happy you're doing something. Yeah. Way fucking 400 pounds. Yeah. And I would go in there and throw sidekicks, and I'd see people walking by like Saturday mornings, like with travelers on Sunset mm-hmm. walking by, and they'd see the karate school, and they'd look at it, and they'd see this 400-pound guy throwing kicks, and they'd, and they'd all put their hands on the glass and go, look at that fucking guy. Look at that fat guy. And wait, were, were there kids in the class too? And they all, <laughs> I loved the kids in the class. I was good friends with the girls. I was really great there because I knew I loved it. I just loved it. I bowed. I did everything. But there was times I'd walk in and the kids would tell me, man, you smell like cigarettes. And all I would do there, I would basically go there, park my car, and have the money ready in my bag. So when I got out of there, I would go to El Compadre and buy Grandma Blow. Mm. It was all part of my midnight little journey. <laughs> Martial arts was all a midnight little journey. But at least you got the workout in. Yeah. And then <laughs> I would go to the, the morning classes. He only had like one or two morning classes at that time. This was when? When, when did you? This is 2001. Oh, okay. Okay. I'm 400 so pretty, pounds. So pretty recent, yeah. I'm okay. 400 fucking pounds. Okay, so 94, I'm in martial arts. 95, I stopped. For five years, all I did was gain fucking weight. I move in with my fucking wife, and I go from 320 to 370 to about 395. I'm walking around at 395. And one day, I'm at Broadway Shoes on Sunset. And a dude is in there, a yoked Russian dude. And I'm not talking yoked steroids. I'm talking yoked. This guy's been doing deadlifts for a long time. Leather jacket, we get to talking. I teach American Jiu-Jitsu. Hmm. Okay. Where do you teach American Jiu-Jitsu? Sunset and Highland. Who was this? Who was it? Bro. It was 120 a month or twice a week. After the first time, I wanted my money back. I wanted my 120 Hmm. back. Hmm. 100 for the gi. It was American Jiu-Jitsu. Okay. You opened up the class with 100 rolls. Wow. A hundred back rolls, you know, side, pa 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 pa, you know, all those right. tapping. Let me tell you something. I lost weight. Oh, yeah. I lost 20 pounds in two weeks, twice a week. My ankles lost weight. He, that guy, just getting down, getting thrown, and getting mm-hmm. up, that makes you lose weight. Yeah. Just falling and getting up makes you lose fucking 25 fucking pounds. It was amazing. But, dog, it was, those guys were killers. 
Yeah. Then he yeah. bumped into me once. I said, listen, I can't come here no more. I'm 400 pounds. Right, right. And 120, I'm snorting blow. I got to give you 120? <laughs> You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Every time I want a package, I want to come and get my 60 back. <laughs> oh, my God. And I'm like, I can't do it no more. And one day I saw him, and he just embarrassed me. He just ripped me apart. He was like, I moved from Hollywood too many flakes like you. You don't want to come to my school. I go, dog, I'm 400 fucking pounds, and you got me doing backflips. When right. I signed with you, you said you were going to work with me and teach me how to fall. You right. I got killers. I got guys that there was a lot of like Hollywood actors yeah, that yeah. went there, yeah. and they really believed that you know that jujitsu. And I'd put them to work. You know, I'd throw them fucking too, but they right. throw you too, man. Yeah. It was hard. It was fucking hard, Lee. And I, it, whatever I was, I was 15 years ago, and this class was hard. It was everybody was always hurt, their wrists yeah. were uh. falling. And one day I was like, I'm like, I, I can't do this no more. And I went back to, and that's when I joined Fuckstick after that. I went to, <laughs> from there I went to Taekwondo back oh, on Sunset. Okay, okay. And I okay. stuck it out with him. And he told me something. I really like Najir. That's his name. Chris, mm -hmm. Chris Najir is a great fucking guy. Mm -hmm. Chris Najir walked in that place as a white belt. Right, right. That's like walking into VMAC as a white belt and 20 years from now you own the place. Yeah, yeah. And now you're teaching what the guy taught you. You still kept it in the neighborhood school. Right, right. His prices are a little high, but he's on Sunset. Right. He's on yeah. fucking Sunset. Yeah. And he told me once, like, I used to go, and I'd get coked out, and then I wouldn't go for a week. And one day I saw him, and he goes, what's going on with you? If you're broke, you're still family. And I'm right, right. He goes, look at your ID card. My ID card in Subak Do yeah. is like, I'm old school. Like, yeah, yeah, my yeah. numbers are from 95. <laughs> so when I go into a school now, they're like, oh, shit, yeah. you're an OG, Jack. You have right. a Subak Do ID card? Yeah, I'm in that fucking whatever. And, uh, you have to join the Federation and all that. No, they're, that's all so they're cool. thieves. Yeah. Those Koreans are thieves. Are you still a member? <laughs> Yeah, oh yeah, I'm, I can, all I got to do is renew my membership and <laughs> I can walk into any Subak right, school right. one week, one class for free, and then the next one I got to pay a class. Okay. If you go. How much would, do you give them every year? Uh, 60 to renew. Damn. And like 80 a year. Wow. 80, oh yeah, yeah, those Korean. The Subak Do, the, it became uh, like many other martial art things. A lot of people opened up schools and they know that. The, the children keep you alive. Yeah. yeah. Especially with Taekwondo. Yeah, it builds yeah. discipline. It does right, this. Right. It does that. You go to a daytime class, the fucking teacher's not even teaching. He's got like a, a yellow belt teaching 16 kids, and they pay what the adults pay. Right. That's right. very fucking lucrative. I mean, it's not a bad living. Well, it's not that it's lucrative. It covers everything else. It yeah. covers the fighter who comes in and sure, doesn't pay. Sure, sure. It covers this guy. It covers that guy. A lot of schools are like that. A lot that. of schools yeah. like yeah. that. That was one place when the original owner had it right. that every week you got juiced. Mm. Mm. Listen to me. Every week you got juiced. On the way out, yep, you don't have your official patch. Oh, $10. It comes from Korea. It gets sent to your house uh, from the Federation. Right. Send them a money. Order. It's got to be on your gi to test for yellow. Right, Do you right. have the yellow belt book? What yellow yeah. belt book? <laughs> you got to buy a book and a video. If yeah, you look yeah. at your contract in the Federation, and then they have the... the yeah. So that guy had to pay the Koreans. This is a very funny story. Chris Najir was paying the Koreans. Guess what? MMA came. Your classes went from 20 to fucking 6. Nobody wanted to learn Taekwondo. Right, right. So one day, he, you know, he said, listen, this is all great and dandy. I know you want your two grand off the top, but here it is. We got six people in here, and they said, listen, that's not our problem. You got to give us our two Gs to keep Subak Do up. He said, I am. I'm going to put jiu-jitsu in there, Gracie jiu-jitsu. They said, we don't want to be involved with Brazilians. He said, then there's no more federation. You guys are oh. cut. So if you join that school now, you don't have to join the Federation oh. because they broke away. Oh, I see. And okay. the fucking guy, remember, part of the Federation, the guy comes once a year. I don't know if you've ever, anybody who listens has been involved with uh, martial arts, but once a year, the big Korean comes. He comes yeah, in yeah, with yeah. his shoes, with the yeah. whole getup on, yeah. right? Because that's yeah. what it is, the <laughs> fucking getup. He don't dress like that. At home, he has shorts on yeah. and a shirt with Jimi Hendrix <laughs> on it. But also, he flies to the States. Right, he right. walks into a school in Burbank. There's yeah. six homos like I was when I was 13. I had Master Shin. I, was I, his Master name? Shin. Master Shin. I never got to see anybody. Oh, please. Korea. They walk we in. Were. You all have to do a form in front of them. Yeah. You got to bow. You eat a little rice. He says something <laughs> in Korean. Right. You know what he's telling you in Korean? You guys are all sucking my dick. <laughs> this shit don't work. 
<laughs> this shit don't work. Ugh. I've been fucking building houses. This shit don't work. Suck my dick. <laughs> and you're there bowing. The teacher's bowing. Everybody's all excited, bowing. This guy don't give a fuck. Before he leaves, the <laughs> assistant comes over and goes, don't forget the little fucking envelope. You, forget, you guys forget when the Korean comes to town. Yeah. It's first class. It's Hilton. It costs you five Gs just for this guy to come bow and go like this. And I remember falling for that shit. And one day going, this motherfucker don't want to be here. We had that. You yeah. don't want to be here. You got to take a picture with the guy. That guy's <laughs> yeah. taking a picture. He's like, what the fuck am I doing with this white fuck? We just bombed these fucks 10 years ago. <laughs> now I got to sit here on the west side of L.A. and bow with this motherfucker. And make believe that was like, my first experience. When I was in college, we, we had Grandmaster Shin. <laughs> we bowed. Found- Ten years ago. Yeah, we bombed these fucks <laughs> ten years ago. He wants to be here. He's trembling. He's like, "What do I need this?" Because he's picking up two G's, and he's oh, going yeah. there. He's going to a ten o'clock, a four o'clock yeah. in San Diego. Oh yeah. He's going to a two o'clock in Vegas. When those fucking Japs come over, they come over heavy. Jack. <laughs> they pick up a big fucking envelope from suckers like us. Meanwhile, we think they're magical, like that guy on YouTube that throws magic tricks on his students, oh, yeah. and they're yeah, flipping. Yeah, yeah. There's fucking people that the believe chi master, that. The master. Guess what? Guess who one of those people was? I believe that guy existed. I wanted cheap powers too. I would have gave that guy a deuce out of my own fucking kick to hang out with him and fucking do that to people. I was a fucking asshole too. I'm a sucker, guys. I'm a sucker for martial arts. When I was a kid, that the kabuto tanfa, I had every weapon. Yeah. I had the thing that you held and you threw yeah. punches to. Throwing knives and the stars. Everything. And, and then they'd sell you the stars and they weren't <laughs> sharpened for an hour, <laughs> yeah. for two fucking days. You're throwing it against the wall and ain't sticking. Bam, you think you're retarded. Up. Then yeah. some friend goes, you got to sharpen them. Right. And once you sharpen those motherfuckers, it's a different type of body. <laughs> Let me get my glasses so I can do some shout outs. All right. <laughs> 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 How much was really that chocolate? Was it like five hundred? Nah, I think it was. So I, was I wouldn't do five hundred. Yes, Thursday you would. You've done it multiple times. No, I wouldn't. You're my little brother. I want to give would a, do it. a shout out to my man Jose Calazo and Camden, Queso Hines, Constantine Rain, always in the game, Mister <laughs> <laughs> Mister Hungus. That should be a new rap, Constantine. Kern Michael fucking in town this weekend. At the store last mm-hmm. night, he was went up on stage with Tripoli, oh, cool. Alex Bison, Rich Santa Cruz, and my girl Veronique. If you haven't seen Veronique on Twitter, you might as well sign up for her page right now. The bitch is banging with a bikini; she's showing big titties. <laughs> it's a party. If you get home at three, you want to whack off. It's the best you got. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you got to whack off to a chick in a bikini. One time, I jacked off to the woman in red. All they do is show her bush. I kept that motherfucker on pause with the line going, through. and I banged out a good fucking dick sucking one night myself. I don't even know what I'm saying. This edible so good. It's time to eat another star. The lobster roll guy is coming to the fucking thing. Okay. All so right. now, Tarzan, you <laughs> get into this Tang Soo Do in college. Taekwondo. Taekwondo. Yeah. Did you get a black belt? No, I got up to red. Okay, and then yeah. what did you do? Then I went to Tang Soo Do. So I went back to Connecticut and joined a Tang Soo Do school. And that was a good school. Uh, Master Wang's in Stratford, Connecticut. Moved to New York. And joined Master Lee's Tang Sudo, and they were affiliated. So I got up to right before Black Belt, and then I moved out here. So I left that organization. I moved out here, and then I started taking karate with Avi Roca. And here in he, town. Yeah, here in you're town. Breathe into the mic. Speak. Oh, the, sorry, Avi like Roca. A, like a girl, at three in the morning. Speak into the mic. <laughs> Avi, uh, you know, now we're still affiliated with him. Um, and uh, he was Nishi- one of Nishiyama's students, like one of his one of his top students. And I used to walk, same thing, I used to walk to his place, and then I was a waiter, and I would walk, just, you know, just walking. And uh, I got up to Greenbelt with Avi. Took, like, five years off. I did nothing. And then I, I joined another Shotokan karate school and got my black belt there. Where was that? That was right down the street, actually. Um, it was a different organization. That was a trailer. Yeah, it was, it was down the street. What, is that guy still there? Yeah. Not a bad school. He's only there a couple of days a week. It's cheap. Real yeah, cheap. Yeah, it's pretty right? cheap. Um, it was, uh, you know, it was okay. It was a different style of Shotokan. It was a little bit different. After, after that, then I, I opened up my own school, and I, start, I went back to Avi. 
So Avi was, you know, he's just down in Pico and Doheny, but it's such a drag drive. So when did you open up your own school? Uh, God, five years ago. What school was this? Valley Martial Arts Center. Okay, no, no, yeah, no. I'm yeah. not trying to quiz you here. When yeah, did yeah, you yeah. join John Jock then? When the fuck did John Jock come in? John Jock I came in. I want you to break it down. Here. 2000, in 2000. What made you walk into John Jock? Now, you're already studying karate. I, had, I studying karate, and I had a bad attitude. So I got in a little argument with the teacher, and, and, uh, <laughs> and I was a brown belt, and we decided I needed to take a month off. So I took a month, but then that month I started itching. I was like, well, what am I going to do for a month? So I drove up to John Jocks with Yogi Steve, actually. We drove up there, and Yogi Steve said, you're, no, you're never going to drive up here. What are you going to drive up here three times a week? It's 10 miles away. I, I got up there. I didn't know who John Jock was. I didn't know what jujitsu was. I just needed a workout. And I went up there, and my first story, I mean, I was a, you know, in my head, I was a brown belt. And I face a brown belt in jujitsu, and I'm thinking of my, you know, I'm smart enough to wear a white belt, thank God. But I'm facing this brown belt, and I'm thinking to myself, this poor bastard. He doesn't know that I'm a brown belt. And I'm going to, and I was pretty good in, in karate at that time. I was like, I'm going to wreck this guy. And he has, he has no idea. He thinks a white belt, he thinks I'm a white belt that's never done anything. I'm going to wreck this guy. That guy, his name was Mark Armstrong. And anybody who's, who's rolled with Mark Armstrong knows that this, they call him the shark. You know, when you roll with Mark, Mark the shark. You're getting wrecked, okay? And this guy, he was a brown belt at the time. This guy armbarred me in two seconds flat. And I hear John Jock yell, Hey, John! Jiu-jitsu's not karate! <laughs> you know? <laughs> and right away, I, w I was like, Holy shit, what just happened? You know, I got... I was like, thank God I didn't say anything about my brown belt. You know, thank God I didn't say anything. And I face faced him again and he got me again in like a minute and again you know that, i have a joe rogan story just like that you know then then i was into it. i started going back to john jocks and i was into it joe rogan was a purple belt at the time you know and he's a big you, you know he's a big guy he's a strong guy he's, he's he's a little shorter than i am but he's he's a big guy and uh i rolled with him once he was a purple belt and john jock said okay whoever you're with you're with this guy for seven minutes Joe Rogan taps me in 20 seconds. And I looked at him and I said, so I, I got six minutes and 40 seconds left with you? And he was like, yeah, he goes, you'll do all right. And the next, time I, the next time I lasted a minute, then the next time two minutes, then, the, then after that he didn't tap me in that session, you know. But that guy, you know, that guy was really good. I haven't rolled with him since then. It's been a long time, but um, really a lot of good experiences. Then I, then I went back to that karate school got my black belt, stayed there for like four more years, and then I left, and then I opened up my own school. Now, and how, I did went, you, how did you hook up with Ichiro? With Taichiro, uh, uh, I, needed, I needed a black belt. I needed a high-level black belt to, to help me open this school because I'm a shodan. I'm a first-level black belt. I needed a guy who was like you know, third, fourth degree. You know, he just got his fifth degree now, which is really good for the school. But he was a fourth-degree black belt, and we needed instruction, so he was just helping me and uh, and Aiko at the time. And then we just said one day, hey, you know, let's uh, let's open it up, not just the three of us. Let's see who else wants to do it. And then we get one guy, and then we got another one, and then another one, and then it just it got bigger. But you guys were you know? doing jujitsu in a studio at first. Yeah, yeah, like but a dance studio. Yeah, yeah, shit. but first we were just we were just renting out space down at Madeline Clark Dance Studios, we rented by the hour. And we started with just the adult karate. Then I said, you know, maybe I'll try kids. You know, so then we started renting out a little bit more space. I got a couple of kids. Then, you know, I became good friends with Marcelo up at John Jocks. And I said, you know, maybe we can add jujitsu to it. Let's try. Marcelo, he was, he was on board even back then. He was a brown belt. I was a purple belt. And uh, we started teaching jujitsu. We would put the mats out wash them, roll, wash them, put them away. And Madeline Clark, they were really cool. They let us keep the mats there. But we had to, we had to map them out each time, each time. We had one, one class a week back then, Friday night. And then, you know, we got Kyle walked in, Eric Medina would, would stop in, um, and then Zach and PJ, and even that little guy Sean would come in. You know, we started getting crossover from the karate, which I didn't even think was going to happen. I didn't even realize, oh, these guys are interested in more than one martial art. 
So I didn't even foresee that, but that's how we got our original students. Then I started going on Craigslist and answering ads and putting stuff on Craigslist. And um, it got bigger. And then Marcelo said, yeah, we need another day. One day a week's not good enough for these guys. And finally, we found, me, Taichiro, and Eiko found a, a school. And from there, that's when we opened uh, Valley Martial Arts Center. And then once you have your own school, you make your own hours. And it just got bigger and bigger. And then we added uh, Nick Papadakis with Kali. You know, we tried yoga for a little while. That tanked on us. And we tried a, uh, a, sword, uh, a sword thing once, and that tanked on us, too. But Thank now, fucking God. Yeah. <laughs> but no, now we have the solid, you know, the Kali is getting better, bigger and better. Um, and the jujitsu, the jujitsu, it's actually taken over. That's like the biggest program there now. And, Why? Then, and then we added kids, jujitsu kids. Why don't you think uh, a lot of schools teach just wrestling? Because even before... I started this. I looked into it just because I had done it in high school. I was like, oh, maybe I'll do it. Just wrestling? Yeah. Like, I don't know. There's I wrestling mean, places in the valley. I have a yeah. friend at a weed store that's a little yoke guy that was <laughs> going to – he's a, like a purple belt over at, uh, at Gracie. Okay. And he was uh, telling me that once a week he would go to a wrestling place. Okay. That he wrestled in high school and he wasn't that good. And he walked in. There's a place around here that's high level. Okay. I'm not really? kidding you. Two or three miles, maybe five miles from here. That's high level. Wrestling? Yeah. That mm. You go there in the daytime, and they will fuck your world up. They have mm. instruction, the whole fucking deal. Really? Huh. Yeah. They okay. have the whole thing. In fact, when I this is this now I feel bad. When I saw Cole Miller in Fort Lauderdale Saturday yeah. night, he goes, We're, there's a, you know, AT&T is everywhere. I would have brought my gi to Fort Lauderdale because it's huge jujitsu down there. Right, right. But everything, I, everybody I called, I called a great school, a Gracie guy, Stan, great guy, answered my call. He goes, is this Joey Diaz? We started talking. And he goes, my, my class is 25 minutes away, blah, 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 blah. And then my aunt was coming Saturday, so I said, you know what, I'm not going to bring a gi. But then when I got there Thursday, some guy's like, dog, AT&T is down the corner. Huh. Are you kidding me? Uh, Are you fucking kidding me? And I fucked up. There's a kid there. That I, I'm older than he is. Right. Steve Marco, the, the wrestler, the UFC kid. I'm just older than he is. Yeah, yeah. But we're the same people. We hung out with the same people. I hung out with his dad. His dad you know, we're all the same motherfuckers. And when I asked Cole, I go, is Steve still there? He goes, yeah. In fact, I went to his wrestling class today. Huh. I wanted to shoot myself. Huh. Steve Marco, you know, went for Oklahoma. But I, you know. Him just to oh, teach right, me right, a right, takedown. Right. I don't oh, know yeah. takedowns. I know what you yeah. guys taught me. Yeah. I had the single and whatever. Yeah. Just to, you know, it's a little yeah. heavy for Uncle Joey when somebody drops you at 300 pounds. Right, right. But it's good to know, oh, just yeah. to know. Oh, Today yeah. when I got up and Lee took me down, uh -huh. I'll tell you what the first thought of me was. If I want to do a tournament, I have to learn how to do this. Yeah. And now I'm happy you Lee gotta, did you, this. You I didn't, learn a I didn't bit, hold yeah. my breath enough. Good. And yeah. Lee took me down. I felt right. really bad because I, no, I, 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 never, I never, as soon as I did never, it, it was never. clean. It was now clean. I know. Yeah. Now I know how he felt, how frustrated 20 people were with me. Joey, listen, <laughs> don't come no more if you're not going to put pressure on my chest. <laughs> people used to throw me, Lee, because I'd lay half on them. Like, and they're like, you're going to lay <laughs> right, on me? Right, and right. I go, no, uh, okay, you want me to lay on Do you? it or don't do it. It happened you know? for six yeah. months. I right. would get killed because <laughs> of chest... I can't pin his arm with my leg. Yes, you can. One day I put my leg on somebody's leg. I passed their guard, and I pinned their leg with yeah. my knee. And I can heal their whole nerve is central. <laughs> 300 pounds in the middle of your leg. Oh, when yeah. I cross your guard, you lose you feel it. it. Oh, People yeah. will tap if I stay there. I'm not a scumbag. I could stay there and make believe like I'm looking for something. I ain't looking for none. I don't know what to do there. <laughs> I know it's hurting you. Yeah. This motherfucker is like a purple belt that Higgins. I heard him go, eh, eh. I can hear a central nervous system breaking down from my I was cut it's 300 on your bone yeah, when, yeah. when you're 180 or 190 I felt it, I felt it too <laughs> yeah it's on your leg yeah. I can feel it that I'm cutting yeah. off circulation I do that six minutes you're that stubby dude in the fucking jiu jitsu tournament <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you have a a very great school I feel very comfortable <laughs> At your school, which I don't feel at a lot of places, it's old school martial arts for me. I came mm. up, now you know why yeah, I yeah. like Valley Mac. Yeah, there's yeah. a bag, there's a wrestling dude, his name is Charlie with a pink Fred, gi on. Fred, Fred, Fred. Fred with a pink <laughs> gi on. 
It's old school. You know, Mondays and Fridays day, they have this thing, Marcelo Madness. Mm. It's from 8 to 8.45. You're picking up tires. It's you and jumping jacks. Oh, yeah. You're whatever. You know what? Listen, if I come to you and I say I can't do it, you know, I'm a little overweight. I'm a lot overweight. I'm not the, my knees hurt. I got a fucked up shoulder. You know what? I, I don't want to be a UFC fighter. But if you're 32 and younger and you're not doing Marcelo Madness twice a week, you're killing yourself to live. Yeah, yeah. Lee can't do it right now because sometimes we do the podcast on Monday nights, a percentage of the time. Right. We do it on Monday nights. But Lee, you have to Lee, you're halfway there. You're yeah. doing the whole kettlebell class. Come on, Lee. Lee does <laughs> the kettlebells now right. and he's picking up a sixty pound bag on his shoulder. He right. showed me up last week. No, it's good. Remember he picked up what the bag you? on his shoulder? Right. You picked up the bag on your shoulder, Lee. A year ago, you couldn't pick up that fucking bag. A year ago, <laughs> when, the, when we went to the grudge match premiere, when fucking Salami called me a day later and he goes, Who was that Chinese kid with you? <laughs> and I go, Lee, and he goes, that's not Lee. How much weight did he gain? You would have not been able to pick up that fucking thing. You don't think so? I know so. You would, You're doing, we, he's doing good he's with the doing. We too. would sweat coming up these stairs. Right. Yeah. I used to come up those stairs a year ago. I swear to my mother, Lee would always, when I'd walk here, I'd make believe like I had it under control. And Lee would go, <laughs> Joey, are you all right? I'd be in a different world just from those back stairs. I told when you, we moved I told in, you. Oh. Yeah, no, no. I told him that when he first came to VMAC, he could, you could do two hip escapes, right? Two, three hip escapes. He turned purple. And on the inside, I was thinking, oh, my God, is this guy going to have a heart attack on me right right here on my floor? Listen, I, I used to worry, you know? Listen, dog. Now across the floor, all uh, the way. Today was the first time in a long time I went across the yeah. floor. I, I didn't That's take a big shroom, floor. I, I'm out of shroom tech. But one time I took shroom tech, and after I rolled a little bit, I was doing those hip escapes like I own that motherfucker, like, <laughs> like an ice skater. I was skating the crawl. He said, a fat dude. I, and it's, it, listen, you go home. Every time I would do one more hip escape, you feel to better. me, that yeah. meant the world. Of course. That of meant course. the world. You don't understand fucking stand that. Like you said today, the grandmaster says, what's jiu-jitsu about? Hip escapes. You can't do enough hip escapes. No. If there's nobody around and you got nothing to do and there's a sidewalk and you got a hard ass anyway, you might as well start hip escaping <laughs> because you will lose more. Why fuck around? That's it. That's it. You know, everybody's looking for the next level to lose weight. Listen, you do 30 minutes of hip escapes at the YMCA and come see me. <laughs> oh, and then yeah. get on the bicycle for 30 minutes. Oh, yeah. And come see me. The first six minutes of hip escapes, you'll ne- your head will never spin like that before. You will doubt your manhood. Oh, your abs and... Oh, you, yeah. you don't... Oh, and no, 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 no. And listen, I let's be know. honest. <laughs> let's be honest. The first year, I was not doing a hip escape. I was doing a seal... Type like, like a, you, a drag, know what those, you know like what those seals do? Dragging your ass on. I the, broke yeah. my toes twice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's how fucked up. I'm not here to lie to nobody. I got the guy who watched me. They watched me and they wouldn't laugh until I left. Then they go, "Did you see him today, Doug?" No, like, that's not what true. What the fuck we're gonna do with him? That's not. We gotta true. have a stretcher in the back here. This is fucked up. <laughs> I goes here with acupuncture needles and darts and shit. <laughs> I remember the fight. We didn't laugh. We didn't no, laugh. no, no, no. It's no, just yeah. listen, man. I remember being there, and a guy bigger than me came in one day, and we were trying to. They were, it was a daytime class, and they were teaching me how to take somebody's back, and we were both so fat that our legs didn't wrap around each other. It was like a fucking <laughs> not even to get the hooks in. This kid came one day, bought a gi, and tapped. The next oh. day, I go. I went to him and I go, oh my God, I'm so happy a big guy finally yeah, yeah. joined. And you go, oh no, he emailed me last night. He quit already. Uh, but you know what? I think, you know, you might be talking about Justin. And from what I heard, you know, he's a nice, he's a nice kid. The kid with the big kid with the blonde hair. Is that who it was? No, 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 no. Oh, somebody else? This was oh, okay. a kid who came in one time. There was a daytime class in oh, VMAC okay. for a year. Yeah. Was a, a fucking. It was Zach and another t- couple guys that were really serious. Right. Then we were, there were like three guys. Okay. That just went there. There was one guy that would walk in with the gi, take his shoes off with a blue gi. He was a security guard. And he'd get on the thing. Oh, I don't know. I don't he'd remember. do two or three things. And then leave. That was it. And get up. No goodbye. No thank you. No yeah. see you next week, guys. Just get up and he put his thing. And you just see him. No, nothing. <laughs> he just leave? And he put, like, if it was raining out, he put a hat on and a scarf with his gi. You'd see him walking on Burbank to the car. There was a, uh, oh my God, the day there was a. Oh, that must have been Reggie. There was a guy. <laughs> that, it was really A Spanish guy. Yeah. It was a yeah. fucking zoo yeah. in the daytime. Was Reggie and, the guy with the headphones on? 
I don't know. It, was, okay. it wasn't okay. okay. There was like two okay. or three guys that weren't okay. This big guy came in, and I'm, I'll never forget. We were both so fat that hey we guys, were. Hey, guys. I know. I, I, I know. Teach we, the got, kids we got. Soon. I we got. Teach we got five yeah, minutes yeah, here. Five minutes. Listen. Thank you for coming in. Oh, I love. I love it. you. Yeah, it was fun. I really this respect you with all my heart as a martial artist. You really mm. get it. You know, I came to you with an idea, and and you know, we're doing great things with a kettlebell yeah. class. Yeah, yeah. This is what fun. we do. We you love Yogi Steve, right? I dude, I you almost, love that guy. I almost quit jujitsu. I liked it so much. I was like, what yeah. am I doing? That I was like, I'm not. I loved it, but yeah. Yeah, don't. But quit. now, don't now quit. I know. No, now yeah. I love both. Yeah, yeah. Oh no, no, so and you're, like, no, and no. Like a while, no, like a while ago, like. But in now, a yearly, you're gonna go to jujitsu four days a week. Yeah. I'm gonna have to hold you and go. Are you fucking retarded? You're gonna be telling me how you're going to street sports to do a <laughs> seminar on leg locks yeah, and shit. Yeah. That the guy told you that even if you have little legs, you could still. T- I can't wait oh, for you yeah. to drive me crazy. For me to go, dog. Yeah. I don't want to hear about it no more. And I'm fucking eighty. I can't Lee, do come dick. more so you can hang no. it. You know, you started. You started off this today. Like I, don't, I have no friends to talk to and all that. Come, come more. Yeah, you know, get those get those comrades going. You know, yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. I'll listen to you, Lou. But, no, but, <laughs> but I like. I was gonna say, I, I've started to like jujitsu after we've been doing this morning class a good, lot. Good, good. And it's honestly a lot because of you. You're you're a great teacher. Like oh, I've thanks, had a bunch man. of teachers, and oh, so and they've all been good at different things. But it's it's really cool. Like it's oh, it's cool that. when you vibe with one. I like I like it. I so, you know I really like teaching. It's it's great. We got a couple you know? old guys. We got Harry yeah, and myself. Yeah. Nick yeah, well, comes and he's a blue belt, and it's just a light workout in the mornings. We come out of there nice and sweaty. You go home feeling good about yourself. That's it. We yeah. always learn something. You always review something. Yep. You always get taught something and. You know, like I said, now Tuesdays, I'm going to build my cardio up. I'm going to go to kettlebell, relax, stretch, and start to warm up yeah. with Hassan. We'll start going to Hassan's and class. you know what, man? Yeah. If I make it to 115, I'm going to get to 115. But next week, I'm going to make it to 118. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then the week after that, I'm going to make the whole class. Yeah, and I'm yeah. going to roll okay. twice. Yeah. And next thing you know, on Tuesdays, you're doing a fucking workout yeah, that people yeah. pray they could do. Right. If you don't have a lot of time on Tuesdays, I, I've never been to Marcelo Madness. Hassan has a pretty intense start. It, it is. It is. Yeah. Really? Like yeah. Yeah. You go but back. You. You start. You. It's you, okay. You, it's okay. You'll what just do the do? best you can. I know do. you gotta go. What? Yeah. He does. He does. Go it. to vmac.com. Correct. ValleyMac. ValleyMac.com. Yeah, I got it here. Complete yeah. schedule. They have the yeah. jiu-jitsu schedule. The teachers. Everybody. Who, Everything. The yeah. kid classes. The the stick fighting. They have nine to ten thirty on Sundays. They have yep. il jitsu. Yep. Little yeah, the mini kicks. The little the t- mini yeah, kicks. Little kids. Really <laughs> hilarious. You know, you're doing yeah. jiu-jitsu. And Mercy's got to come eventually, right? She's gonna come. Mercy's definitely gonna come. Okay. Mercy's good. gonna. <laughs> Mercy likes when I tackle her. I'm already good. getting yeah, her she'll ready. Love I tickle it. her and stuff. And yeah. VMAC is big, so they could run the first couple of times. Oh yeah. Phones out, they run. You put give them a gi. No, Sensei Nick is he's great with those my guys. daughter. Yeah, listen, I don't know what she wants to do. Let her come in and try. That's it. But what yeah. I want is for her to pick one something. Sure, sure. If she comes to me one day and says, "You know what? That's I like it. Mr. Butt. I like Uncle John. That's but right. I I, I want to." Do more kicks or in Taekwondo. Yeah, yeah. You know what, or I want to do- go dancing. You got to let her try. Whatever you know? the fuck. Yeah. yeah. No yeah. pole dancing. I'll fucking bust your head right now. <laughs> I'll fucking bury you. You understand me, cocksucker? No pole dancing till I die. Then you do what the fuck you want. But while I'm alive, listen, man. Yeah, I love the Ronda Rousey movement. I love the woman's jiu-jitsu movement. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. The EBI thing with uh, uh, Grace Gundrum, a 12-year-old. Uh, Jiu Jitsu Phenom, all those little Tent Planet girls. When I first watched it, yes, I got emotional. I was excited. Right. I was more excited because this means that my daughter, I don't have to worry. Right. Those little girls are not strong, so they work off technique, pure technique, which Listen, sometimes. You all know, you know, Pam had me, me passed out on my floor. You know, she choked me out 100%. You know, and, uh, you know, she's half my weight. So, yeah, let's not judge, you know, women at all. No, and I love them. I, I mean, can sleep at night. <laughs> yeah. I know, and I tell Lee all the time, yeah. we giggle about it, but in 10 years, it's going to be a, every rapist is going to have a busted elbow. That's how they're going to get rapists. Good. He almost had my pants <laughs> off, but I busted his elbow. <laughs> Cops are going to come. You got a big coconut yeah. on your Too elbow. Too bad for him. Where were yeah. you? I was at the circus. No, you weren't. You tried to rape a little black girl on right. Lancashire, you fuck. That's right. <laughs> I love you, John Bud, with you all too, our Joey. Heart. Thank you for all thank your you. help. Thank you, thank you, Lee.
Love you, let's, buddy. let's give Thank a little you. fucking Love shout out to the sponsors here. Like I said, VMAC, they're there seven days a week, banging them. I think Saturday they even have a few class. Sure. I think they even teach a class from 11 to 12 how to become a magician. They got everything. <laughs> you understand me? They don't fuck around. We're doing kettlebells, jujitsu, karate. Karate. Yes. While we're talking about karate, a lot of you people go work out, you go to the gym, you're single. You know, we got a lot of guys that listen to this. We got a lot of single girls. You come home, you're bored. The last thing anybody wants to do is fucking wait online at a grocery store or shut home and fucking cook some complicated meal. Expensive, unhealthy takeout is hardly better. That's where new service comes in. Blue Apron. Tremendous. They deliver farm fresh ingredients, step-by-step recipes to your home, allowing you to create healthy, handcrafted meals at home without going to the grocery store. For less than 10 bucks a meal, Blue Apron sends you fresh ingredients, perfectly proportioned, making cooking healthy meals easy and fun. No trips to the grocery store, no waste of unused ingredients. Plus, guess what else, Lee? You'll learn how to cook. Don't just sit there like a fucking bumpy, Lee. You'll learn how to cook with specialty ingredients that are hard to find. Blue Apron is also perfect for date night, John, bud. You and I go, whatever. Uh, I'm you, sorry. Me. You, you me. You me. You yeah. me. I know you got a lot of girlfriends. You're a man of, <laughs> you're a man of many women. <laughs> uh, you're going to get me in trouble here. I cracked right. myself up. <laughs> <laughs> Blue Apron is perfect for date night. Cooking with friends. They even offer family plans with kid-friendly ingredients so the whole fucking family can eat and have fun preparing the meals together. Each meal is balanced, okay? 500 to 700 calories per serving. And it tastes tremendous. And it, cooking takes like a half hour. That's it. Shipping is flexible and free. And the menus are always new. They won't send you the same meal twice. Like this week. Let's say you get the two-person plan. They got spring Korean, spicy Korean chicken wings. Talking about the Koreans. No disrespect. I love you bastards. Spicy Korean chicken wings with rice cakes. And catfish piccata with fettuccine <laughs> and spinach. Are you nuts or what? Sent right to your house with a box frozen. You get home from work, the door right there. Boom. You carry it right in with the newspaper. You go, you pee, you wash your hands. You go to the kitchen, you open the box up. You read the card. They give you a card with a recipe. You take the ingredients out. You take the frying pan out, the <laughs> boiler. You do exactly what they tell you to the T, and you can't mess up. A chick comes over the house a half hour later. She thinks she's the fucking chef of the future. It was, <laughs> it was Blue Apron. It was Blue Apron. Let's say you have the family plan. Barbecue salmon with sweet potato mashed potatoes. Who does that? Sweet potato mashed potatoes. Who does that shit? <laughs> Nobody. You got pork sukinami ramen <laughs> with bok choy. All right? No, it's pork sukumi. I'm sorry. I'm not. Listen, I didn't take Japanese in high school. I took Latin. All right? Anyway, do me a favor. You want to cook incredible meals and blow away and be blown away by quality and freshness? There's no better way than Blue Apron. Like I said, go to blueapron.com slash Joey and get two meals for free. Again, go to blueapron.com slash Joey and get two meals for free. My treat. Two first two meals are on me. Go to blueapron.com slash Joey. How's that for you? All right. All right. All right. Beautiful. Listen, you're sick and tired of walking around with those white underwear with skid marks, stuff creeping up your legs. Enough is enough. I got some new I got some new ideas for you. Ready? It's called me undies. When I go to jujitsu, you know what makes me comfortable? I'm sick and tired of pulling up my pants or my underwear. Remember today, Lee, you were doing a backflip and and uh, and they, John Bud said to you, Lee, you do it, but don't get naked. Because stuff is falling <laughs> off you. I don't like that. I don't like having that feeling. I'm doing a hip escape in those little white little underwears I used to be with all the problems I had. Not little white underwears are slipping away from me. That all ended <laughs> when I got my first shipment of me undies, okay? Because listen. We all know how sexy confidence can be. Confidence comes from being comfortable. How great do you feel when your, um, when your, when your underwear is not wrinkling and riding up your little whatever? Me undies gets it. And that's why they've created the world's most, what are you guys laughing about? The world's most comfortable underwear for a daily dose of confidence. You wear underwear every day, correct? That's 365 a year, rain or shine. You need to be extraordinary without, without a big price tag. That's where MeUndies comes in. They understand that. They've created the most comfortable underwear, period. That's all I wear to jiu-jitsu is MeUndies. You know why? Because they're made from Modal, a fabric that's twice as soft as cotton. That's twice as soft as whatever you're wearing right now. Go ahead. 
feel between your nuts and your little monkey. That shit is rotten. With me undies, that don't happen. <laughs> me undies comes in tons of colors and styles. The only place to get matching pairs for men and women. A little something for Christmas, all right? And they release a new design every month. Today I'm wearing the fucking camouflage, because that's how I roll. The black ones I got are too tight, but I don't give a fuck. I wear those for exotic nights. Plus, we all know that paying for shipping sucks. So MeUndies has removed that from the equation. All orders in U.S. and Canada, they ship for free. MeUndies even has a money-back guarantee. If you don't love your first pair, boom, you get it for free. You literally get nothing to lose. So do me a favor. Go to MeUndies.com. Slash Joey. Boom. And get 20% off your first order and free shipping in the continental United States and in Canada. And we don't stop there. <laughs> I think I got fucking bugs or something like that. I was doing sit-ups at the park. Go to honor.com. You want to be healthy? We're talking about shroom tech. That now, when I do shroom tech, I got to do extra, extra hip, hip escapes. escapes at the end of the workout. They also the creator of Alpha Brain. Alpha Brain. Nootropics to the 100%. You'll be thinking clear. You'll be like fucking Copernicus. Don't just sit there like a zombie. Every once in a while, you're like, why am I so fucking stupid? Why? Because you're not thinking correctly. You're not resting. You're not sleeping. You're not reading. You're not taking care of yourself. It all starts with fucking Alpha Brain. Alpha brain the nootropic. <laughs> you write your goals down. You drink water. You take some shroom tech. You join some martial art class, whether it be fucking throwing knives or some basic karate class. Whatever the fuck turns you on. Kickboxing, jujitsu. But it all starts at Onyx products. The hemp protein, 16 fucking grams of protein per scoop. Two scoops, the cocoa. There's, nothing, there's no better protein powder out there than the hemp protein force. I'm telling you right now, I'm a fat fuck. Some water, some ice cubes, two scoops. A fucking banana, a scoop of peanut butter, bam! Who's better than you? 300 fucking calories, 32 grams of protein, boom. Listen, don't believe me. Go to honor.com right now. Look at the great selection of uh, nutrients they have, supplements, even the kettlebells. I can't hook you up on the kettlebells, but the nutrients, I'll get you 10% off. Go to honor and press. Church. Boom! And get 10% <laughs> off right now from your first order, and it gets delivered right to your door, right? I love you. John Budd, I love you. If you're thinking, of, if you live in the other. Valley, Tarzan, and Sino, where the fuck you live? You're thinking of starting jujitsu in Hollywood, North Top. Where the fuck you live? Go to VMAC. You get a free class for free. Just walking in. Just go listen. Uh, whatever. I want to come in. I want to do a free class. I want people to throw me around and they'll take care of you. They got karate. They got jujitsu program. Your kid, he's half a fucking momo. Take him down there. They'll straighten him out. I'll throw his fucking ass out of there. Let's say he can't eat peanut butter. We'll straighten him out. He'll be eating peanut butter by the end of the year. <laughs> Japanese people don't give a fuck about peanut butter. He'll be jumping up and down, scratching your kid. Anyway, I love you, cocksuckers. I'm at Helium next week in Portland. And the week after that, New Jersey, I'm telling you right now, the Stress Factory, November 12th through the 15th. And I'm in Helium. 11.5 through 11.7. I love you guys. Thank you, John Bud. Thank Lisa you. Yat. Don't forget about Flying Jew Radio. Downloading like a motherfucker. Numbers are grown with the Flying Jew. He had porno people on New there. New episode today. He had John Genoa on there. He's always got some freaks <laughs> on there. Whatever his fucking name is. I love you, cocksucker. Stay black.